we know y'all like it when we play that uh, little intro thing. Gets you a little excited. Nation. Happy I don't mind. Thursday. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind someone who like really nasally voice and acoustic guitar or ukulele is all like Nathan. <laughs> this uh, this Nathan on the Injury Proof Show. And like that's it. Like that's the jingle. Bob Dylan kind of. If someone could just vibe. do that. If someone yeah, if sucks anybody... at guitar or ukulele and likes to record their terrible songs, we're looking for do you. Do it. Yeah. Hi, welcome I'm to Ninja totally Proof Live. Fine. I am Drew. This over he here is my co-host, Abandoned Bourbon. <laughs> we're going anyway, off the rails already. You're One off the rails in. already. Um, guys, uh, glad to have you all here with us. Um, it's winter time, so the air is dry, which means I'm going to cough incessantly throughout the video. I apologize in advance, <coughs> but uh, but I'm glad to be here with you after a couple weeks off. Well, just one week, really. We missed Thanksgiving week because it was Thanksgiving, you know, on Thursday when we normally do live. I was just putting up a Christmas tree with my family, Brian. I assume you were doing family things as well. Is that correct? Probably. Fair assumption. Probably. Yeah. And I assume you all were too. And as much as I would have liked to maybe go live and do a whiskey thing, I didn't want to make you feel obligated to jump on the stream and hang out with us. Cause I know you would, you know, this is a familial type bond we have across the screen between the cameras. And uh, I'm just not going to take advantage of that. Not one bit. Um, we're going to get into some whiskey tonight for sure. We're talking about these Elijah Craig picks, but before we start sipping Elijah Craig, what do we have to, what else do we have to sip, Brian? Uh, I am drinking the, um, no, 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 Goose no, no, Island. no, no, I Wait, set what? you, uh, God. I no. just set you up. It's December. Said, what the heck drinking. is wrong with you? I will always and forever stay loyal to high noon sun sips, the unofficial, not really actual, but fake sponsor of the entry proof podcast and the droopy whiskey live streams mm, uh, nice. drinking the grapefruit so, tonight it's so slurpable it's it so delivered slurpable. it's 100 slurpable it it slides down the gullet easily it's got a great it's got like the perfect viscosity it's crisp but it's guys go ahead and throw drinkable. a thumbs up thumbs up in the chat if you think it's slurpable would be a good next merch item for patreon it's yeah. slurpable. i mean we could do a little podcast. We could do a little knockoff of the end or the high noon logo. And uh, if you guys, oh, yeah, it's the high noon logo. It just says West. entry proof. <laughs> if you, that's a great idea. We should hundred percent do that. Um, if you guys watched my high West video, you know that I couldn't help but say high noon throughout the whole dang thing. So it was what it was. Um, conditioning, social conditioning. We're going to call it that. That said, we do stand by, or at least I stand by, uh, any time of year, the quality and the pure refreshment that rests within the aluminum walls of High Noon Sunsets. Cool. Well, uh, ah. on better news, I am sipping uh, some draft uh, Goose Island Bourbon County uh, bur 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 Bourbon County Barrel Stout. Bourbon County. Bur Keep trying. Bur County Barrel, Do your best. Barrel County Bourbon Stout. Be burger, burger, burger Capital. Bourbon, Steve. Are you drunk? Uh, cherry wine. I mean... Cherry, cherry wheat. What is it? Cherry wood. The cherry wood variant. No, it's not a COVID variant. Good. It's the cherry wood variant. Nice. Um, I was anybody who's been some drinking the BCBS. Let me know what your favorite has been so far. I was drinking some of this sample we saved from, uh, or I saved from a couple of tastings ago. This one was. Blood Oath, which batch of Blood Oath was this? The uh, Pact Five. I thought it was so good. I revisited it today, and it holds up. It is really good. I was surprised by this, and I regret not picking them up because I could have bought like eight Blood Oath hmm. Pact Fives, um, and they're good. <laughs> that said, I have plenty of good whiskey, so we're not in a crisis mode. But Matthew M scoring a case of nine twenty one. Dang, gosh, that's a that's a grab. I've still not seen nine twenty one here. You know how long it would take me to get through a case of one whiskey? Like, cause yeah, and, uh, even the night. ones I drink the most, which are probably Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, it would probably take me two years to drink an entire case. Eric Sawyer flexing on the beer the guys. Way. Before uh, he was, um, before he was Neat Nation and Swing Nation, he was 
Uh, what would it be? Beer called? Nathan. Beer Nathan. Yeah, I was uh, at his birthday party. We popped some beers, some barrel aged stuff. I've actually got some couple different editions of Third Space here locally. Some of their barrel aged stouts, but particularly uh, barrel aged coffee stouts, which are pretty sick. We did one with a light, light roast coffee, uh, Peru Peruvian coffee, which is I may get one of them. Actually, no, we're gonna do a blind later. Got to pace it. I tell you, I, do a I, need, I need one of those and a barrel awesome beer. new mushroom Stone Creek coffee mugs that I saw. In my you like those? News box you like that? That know me? Yeah. Well, my roaster mushrooms. loves going foraging for mushrooms, and so I've been trying to find him a mushroom mug. And I found this person who does um, hand th- hand um, made ceramics. Thrown. Yeah. And yeah, hand thrown ceramics, and the handle like comes up, and then it makes like a the top of the toadstool thing, and and they're beautiful. Get out. But I saw they're a hundred dollars a mug, Ew. and I don't like him. Don't that like much. that. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to find I've looked at there's a bunch of Etsy stores, not yours and not your wife's. But there's a couple of other Etsy stores I've seen with mushroom mugs. But I do need a mushroom mug to give them. for. Yeah, Christmas. no, I can get you one of these. I've got your samples. I got to get those out. I'll take them into work tomorrow and I'll get you a mug with some coffee. In oh, the my mail gosh. Tomorrow. What's the. um? Yeah, you guys got something. So it looks like a coffee net coffee 200 hour yeah it's yep it's coffee net uh 200 hour um supernatural we call it it's cool yeah let's get nerdy about coffee real quick because i've been trying a bunch of wacky fermentation stuff trying to figure out if i want to well that one's pretty wacky wild it's pretty wacky um it's i mean it's like i posted on my my professional instagram um it's almost got like a sparkling acidity to it you know it's like phosphoric and lactic combined um Mm. and then the then it's you know a big natty it's blueberries but it's not overly fermenty we're not in balsamic vinegar territory um but it's really really solid i'm i can't drink a ton of it you know i'm gonna have it a little bit this week and then probably have to dial it back (laughs) we do have Another Colombian, a blue, uh, we're calling it blue honey. It's a honey process, but it's because uh, there. I don't even remember why off the top of my head. There's some reason we're calling it blue honey. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, blue honey is not really a thing when it comes to honey processing coffee, but um, it is. Is that like from, a, is that another coffee net or is that from shoddy? No, I do not remember off the top of my noggin. I tried to, I tried a sample of uh, a blue cedra from, from shoddy, but then, um, this one that I'm looking at bringing in, I don't think any of my the people who work with me are listening to this. I'm trying to bring in a coffee specifically for the staff that we don't sell. We just yeah. roast it in for the staff. And um, I tried this coffee uh, called Citrus Winds is what they call it. And it's a mixed fermentation coffee. And it is the most bizarre coffee I've ever tasted. It tastes like huh. chamomile tea and lemongrass and mint and rose and it's incredibly bright like if you just eat the bean after roasting it tastes like a squirt or sprite like it's got this super like citrusy effervescent soda like sweetness um but it's incredibly bright i've never had a coffee that's been like as citrus peel herbal bright as this one is and i don't i still don't know if i like it but it's um <clears throat> really captivating so okay so so this um this blue honey it's because the farm is called blue cedar azul um oh, yeah. and it's from tolima from tolima so can we crush nice. that one yep that sounds All tasty right. Yeah, if you're interested in picking up coffees, um, so at Stone Creek, this 200-hour Supernatural, just go to stonecreekcoffee.com, and you can still use the code WHISKEY15 for 15% off your order. You always get free shipping through UPS Ground at stonecreekcoffee.com. And then Brian's Coffees, uh, Brian, tell them where they can get them. You can go to quillscoffee.com. That's Q-U-I-L-O-S. I had to figure out what it was. <laughs> where are Quillscoffee.com. We? And do you have any dank codes you can drop for that squad? Yeah, I have to double check what it is. I want to say it's holiday 2021. Um, I, but we don't always have free UPS shipping. So that's just free shipping if over 40 bucks. Um, we uh, have p- put a couple of new things on as of late. Um, we have a natural processed anaerobic process um, for anaerobic fermentation. 
uh, sampler set on the site that's really interesting. It's uh, three coffees all from the same farm, but different micro lots on the farm. They are made up of different varieties of coffee, and their fermentation processes are slightly different for each coffee. So terroir should all be so slightly similar. And so you just taste these interesting nuances just based on, you know, variety. And then at that point, what they're doing with the um, fermentation. So you have one that's incredibly fruity, one that's uh, more tropical than berry. One's a little bit more chocolatey. It's really interesting kind of little set. But um, I think all the coffees are pretty, pretty nice right now. I've got a couple more that are on their way in. in it's a good time weeks. of year for coffee. Yeah, start sure. to get a little tired after the new year. All right, um, let's get into the whiskey. Matthew M asks, "What's the best barrel proof whiskey you guys have had?" I need something to hunt. Well, Matthew, I'll tell you, and then I'll tell you what you can actually try and hunt because <laughs> there's like the best ones we've ever had, and then there's like the ones you can actually get. You know, Booker's Rye. Brian did a video on Booker's Rye recently. That's got to be you know in the top few uh, best barrel proof whiskeys I've ever had. Um, four roses, limited edition, small batches. Brian, you're a king of Kentucky guy. Yeah, That's huge king Brown Kentucky guy. But him. I also think that the M20 and the N25 are also <coughs> barrel strength. I could be wrong. I mean, they're lower proof, but I thought that they were barrel strength. Um, What's the I, Victor's 20 setting people back now? What's the MSRP on that? Like oh, I mean, G? it's like an eight, eight or nine hundred dollar bottle. Yeah. Um, if you can find one, if you get one, yeah, yeah. You know, they just do like, I think they just do a single, well, it's, it can't be a single barrel, a few single barrels a year. It could, it has to be less than a thousand bottles. They do a year. I would have to assume. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So then in terms of ones you can actually hunt, you know, stag junior is in high demand, but is very good. Brian's not as big on that, but Elijah Craig barrel proof 12 year standard Elijah Craig barrel proof release is very good. I will uh, say I did get to try the Stag Junior batch 16 yesterday and really enjoyed it. Good. It was good. super flavorful. It wasn't heat forward like I feel like they normally are. Um they it had a lot of sweetness. It was really enjoyable. Have you had batch 16? I have not. No. You would like it. You would Well, I it. believe I would cuz I generally like Stag Junior. Eric so. Sawyer, what the h are you talking about? What barrel did you have <laughs> we'll what dig into that later that be sub, sub if he tech. tells me if well, he I've tells got... me a barrel if he tells me a barrel that's in the 20s i'm not going to be surprised let's see what he has to say uh plenty of members of the nathan collective have been reaching out saying they have uh picked up they have gotten their shipment of the spaniard or oh let's go picket, which as soon guys i mean as soon as we took it live it sold out like it was like boom bottom boom so we moved most of the barrels through nation and then uh turned it on seal box for like a couple hours and it was gone so uh we only have 144 bottles of the eight year 21 percent rye mgp bourbon from dancing goat uh coming that should be live in like two weeks so it's time to get the hype train rolling or less we're gonna roll so, that out here hope you guys are ready perfect for some last minute christmas juice. gift yeah yes i'm gonna get close um, to the and that one's this. i think that one might move because a lot of members of nation particularly in patreon were saying like hey i picked up one of the spaniard i'm i'm holding out for the for the uh eight year mgp and i don't blame you the spaniard is great the M eight year mgp is great they're both great but i know the hype is higher on the mgp bourbon this is also mgp by the way just finished in spanish oak and corn whiskey you know you get it. it's different but same distillery so get jacked uh if you have this um pour out a little tell us what you think uh tom did taste it uh earlier in the week or sometime around thanksgiving and messaged us saying he was digging it for sure uh kyle got his he messaged me like right before we went live saying i got him planning on popping one so i would love to know what you all are thinking of the spaniard as we go um, went to a event Brian, uh, on Monday some... and brought some up for for uh, one of my friends when we were at the bar. And he was like, what is this? It's so good. I'm like, well, which friend's called the Spaniard? Which friend, Tim? No, completely different friend. You wouldn't know this friend. Fine. One day. I knew one day friends. you might know this friend. How many friends could you possibly have? 
Not many, honestly. So you have a lot. Probably a lot of people. Probably maybe you. one. I might have one. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's see. I got a spreadsheet for this stuff. Sixty-four point six five is the proof. For sixty-four point six five. So one twenty-nine three. One twenty nine three is the barrel. Oh, you're working on King. Eric Kentucky. Sawyer did not like of King of Kentucky. Like I said, if it's in the twenties, I wouldn't be surprised. They pulled from two different warehouses. I haven't gotten a lot of experience on the second um, warehouse, but the one barrel I had from it is the worst that I've had. Um, so what do you say? One twenty nine point three. One twenty nine. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. 129.3 is a proof not on my spreadsheet. Now, my spreadsheet is missing hmm. barrels 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 21, 24, 25. So it could be anywhere in there. Do you by chance know how many bottles? Just for the there? record, Brian is now riffing on King of Kentucky batches because uh, Eric texted him. He, he didn't preface it in any way. <laughs> um, real quick, well, um, Eric answers that Yeah, question. Porkins, what'd you think? He says he would never guess that it was corn whiskey after tasting. Is that a pro or is that a con? Because Kyle also said oaky bugger or booger, but <laughs> I assume bugger. Is that a pro or is that a con? Like descriptive we need feedback do you guys dig it i i obviously hope you do i love it but uh william miley says why doesn't it say the spaniard somewhere on the bottle uh is because it was bottled prior to our picking it believe it or not um and we can do we did learn this um we can do stickers with seal box and they will sticker things for us special stickers we just have to plan in advance and then we could have said the Spaniard put a cool Inigo Montoya sticker on there or something. Uh, and sticker lead time. If we're going to name slash sticker, the suggestions of buttercream, that's what we, that was the working title. Um, but we can name it something else. Gosh, it feels like something is biting my back. This is uncomfortable. Mm. Anyway, we need to, if we're going to sticker that we got to do it now. Brian's kind of a master sticker designer. Did you see the most recent one I did of Wild Turkey, the or Wilderness Trail? The I'm Mariah sure I did. One? Oh for, yeah, the Mariah yeah. Carey. Yeah. All I want for Christmas is booze. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Porkin says he likes it a lot, but he's thinking it's going to be a mood whiskey. I burn <laughs> through it. Like I just, I'm so deep into the oak right now. Like so big on a big, rich oaky whiskey. That like that's all I'm reaching for. I've been drinking more of my top shelf stuff because I just want that high aged profile. If you really like that oaky, high aged, super voluptuous profile, maybe try this year's <laughs> Bourbon New County Island Bourbon County brand stout, particularly the cherry wood, as I'm enjoying it right now. All right, so Matthew M asked the question, which we normally talk about this at the top of the show. But it's have we scored any good bottles lately? The last one I scored was a couple of weeks ago, and that was the Midwinter Nights Dram. I think I got that like right before our last live, and then I did a video about it. I haven't picked up anything else since. Um, quite frankly, it was a tough year in the pond household, and uh, I need to discontinue some of my streaming subscriptions. <laughs> We're fine. We're good. Um, but got to take it easy um on this expenditure so i'm i'm holding out for a hero as they say uh if i i'm headed down to texas and i'll do some driving and shopping when i'm down there we leave next wednesday for that and uh yeah other than that i'm not like i'm not buying things that aren't absolute bangers right now but uh, plus we i gotta buy like a buttload of bottles of you know this next eight year barrel pick so which i'm stoked for but Brian, have you picked anything out recently? Yeah, uh, Kyle Ramage actually. He's uh, he's saying he feels like the Span needs to open up a bit. I think he said it. He's had it open like ten. He opened it like ten minutes ago. Uh, accurate. If you if you remember my messaging about it, this is definitely a bottle that um, was was very different the first day I had it versus once I I had had a little bit poured out of it and came back to it a couple of days later. Changed significantly. Um, I would also suggest just adding a touch of water. 
like just out of touch of water if it's fresh out of the barrel i did that and i was like oh yeah no that yeah really helps soften yeah. the blow in terms yeah. of what i uh picked up recently i did grab one of koi these bad boys. let's go nice dude got the old koi hill and this and is a hundred vibing on it point. what's up are you vibing on it in the same way that others are yeah it's um i've had two different barrels so far and um tasted tasted both of them beer. yeah both of them are hitters um it you know my biggest concern with it and this is coming from somebody who got to try a lot of the old forester barrel strengths because a lot of them dropped here in louisville you know i don't want that big banana note i don't i don't like yeah. it i don't like it in any whiskey at all um i'm yeah. averse to it in coffee it's just not a flavor i want in things at all unless it's a banana split same to um, you and me man and so i was nervous about that and the nose is really inviting it has a lot of similarities to king of kentucky this is a nine year aged brown foreman product um and i don't know if you don't know much about the koi hill stuff it was just something i didn't really think about um until you start seeing people having super high prices on secondary and you're like what's the deal with koi hill you know the rye didn't even get that much, and the rye was awesome. So I didn't really know what was going on. Um, but it is hazmat. You know, people go ham, really teary yeah. over that kind of stuff. So, yeah, um, so yeah it's, the, you know, the one I tried was super – or the one I tried yesterday morning was um, super caramely. It almost reminded me of Michter's Tin in that way, but then had a lot of other attributes that were more similar to, like, Old, old Forester, King of Kentucky, that kind of line of stuff. I didn't find it to be overly oaky, but I also wasn't looking for that. I was just going, oh man, this is just so desserty and sweet and so full and rich because of how, you know, uh, mouth coating it was. Um, so, you know, wh whereas it's hard for me to compare it to King of Kentucky in that regard because King of Kentucky is so oaky and so leathery. Uh, but I like that. Nice. Uh, William uh, Wiley, Ryan, I don't understand this banana note. I have almost every Jack Daniels product and never got a banana note. I went to the grocery store and bought a banana. Did side by side? Don't get it. <laughs> Dude, don't get the banana runs, bro. Uh, that's uh, get more the artificial banana. Or maybe it's just a tasting thing, but I, I don't see how people can't get it, particularly in Jack products, at Old Forester products, 1792 products. Woodford yeah, I, products. <laughs> there, there are times, hey, William, there are times where I feel like it comes across like um, more, more similar to like banana Laffy Taffy, this exaggerated kind of fake banana taste that in, in a lot of times when it comes across, it's in the linger. The longer it lingers, it dances on, oh, this could kind of be a tropical note, but then it comes off being this kind of um, underripe banana thing. And I feel like I'm more susceptible to it. And maybe Drew could say the same thing. Maybe Kyle Ramage could say the same thing in the chat. Kyle loves because, it. He's in well, because it. in coffee, you know, we actually, when I, well, again, Kyle loves it. But when I taste that note, usually it's like, oh, there's something kind of up with this fermentation. We kind of, yeah, right. We'd, yeah. we'd want a coffee to be cleaner, not show this kind of character. But, you know, people love IPAs and now people apparently like coffees that are for, fermented all inaccurately or incredibly precisely to taste funky. So, you know, we're back to the 70s and funky is in and you can like whatever you like and you can't judge someone else for it or you'll get canceled. So, you know, that's an interesting thing. We should do an episode on whether or not like on the impacts of cancel culture and the reaction against cancel culture because there are people who are making quite a good living just totally rejecting cancel culture and they're almost uncancelable. Like if you just choose not to play the cancel game, it's almost like people can't cancel you. They're like, whatever, I'm just going to keep doing what I do. The minute you apologize, you're sort of taken over. That said, you should be canceled for certain things. I would agree on that. Um, but again, not that I would advocate for barstool sports uh, in any way, but they've kind of taken bite, Everybody that. knows the rules. Exactly. Um, they've kind of taken the approach that cancel us we don't care like our listeners don't care and it's true they don't um 
and so like cancel culture is still it's not a majority thing um it's popular and it's certainly popular uh within popular media but it's not actually like a ubiquitous phenomenon so yeah wigmaster is kind of right you get canceled if you let yourself be that said don't be a jag (laughs) i'm not a fan of cancel culture but i'm also not a fan of people just like living without any sort of care for the people around them like the goal is probably to be like hey let's try and live life in a way that we're like not unnecessarily offensive we should stand up for what we believe regardless of what that is like other than uh, if you don't what's the point of having beliefs that said um hold those beliefs with care and grace all right soapbox over you guys want to talk about elijah craig we could Let's we do could it. do such a thing what well, we should because that's what we told the people we'd talk about um after that we have uh another blind who is this blind from oh shoot it's also from mf our, oh uh, great, 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 great! Yep. Uh, Jimmy Jungle. Uh, what's his handle on here? I haven't seen him comment. Yeah, Jiggle today. Jiggle Bob Small Pants or something. Um, where <laughs> he had a he killer. Going? He had a ki- Jig Jug Jug Jig Jig Jug something like that. Jug That's Jug. Who he was. Yeah, something like that. And uh, but he <laughs> where's the? I need a, oh, there's a pencil. I need paper. Jugs, are you with us tonight? It's gonna be a different. One. Don't know. call him Jugs. But, are you gonna cancel me? <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, you know, one of my favorite authors of all time um, actually has a song um, about about cancer culture. Um, yeah, it's called um, "Canceled." Um, it's by it's by Slow Tie. He's a British rapper, um, and uh, fantastic song fantastic song um i'm gonna before we get into elijah craig i'm just gonna, gonna listen to it no i'm gonna do you want me to play MF it and tell him hey fyi yo dog do you want me to play the song yo, while you're messaging him dog well then we're gonna lose monetization on this video <laughs> oh i don't know how that stuff <laughs> but works. we'll listen to it later you can link it in spot you can drop the spotify link in the chat it's fine i'm and over then it we'll... i don't really want to Nope, that's I'm good. We good. so I got Birkenstocks. Got these Birkenstock shoes. shoes. Does anybody wear Birkenstocks? Shoes um, or sandals? My wife does. My wife says so they're Birk. shoes. I Birk. got the shoes because why would I wear sandals in the middle of winter? Um, but I got shoes that looked kind of cool because my wife was getting some new. Um, was giving was getting some some new ones and some boots, and I've never worn them before, and my entire body is in pain wearing these shoes but the problem with it is Birkenstocks on their website they're like well our shoes are designed to be like a, a corrective thing and um, they're made to follow the natural flow of your foot and it, basically every other shoe sucks and there's a break in and you have to basically train your your stupid little feet that have never known how to really be themselves to be themselves and um is this like those no, stupid people who and no returns the, and no returns running shoes with the toes i'm guessing i'm guessing it's similar and so now i'm stuck with these birkenstocks that i can't return with this bs that says you basically have to just figure it out because all of your other nikes and other shoes aren't aren't right hey i'm so sorry i think i Hold on. I feel like I have to step in the other room real quick because I can't tell what my dog's doing. Uh-oh. That's I not did, what you we should had probably Chinese should. for dinner, and I don't know if he's like eating something. Oh. You pour that. I, Give me one second. Yeah. I gotta so, check this out. I'm gonna be able to hear. No I'll hear you. I'm just yeah, gonna no problem. For I'm gonna riff. Um, speaking of eating things, I caught my daughter, like my eight month old daughter, I was letting her play on the floor, and she crawled into the pantry for like a hot second. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, she was in there for literally like a second. And she's got like an old potato with the big old sprout on it in her mouth. That's poisonous. That's not great. We don't like that. So thankfully, I caught her like just as she put it in her mouth. And so like, she's fine. But gosh, kids and dogs and stuff, they need to stop eating crap. so weird. Yeah, I mean, so I'm... children too. (laughs) 
looking just in the other room, like the Christmas tree cuts off part of my archway. And all I see is like, I can't see the rug anymore. And I'm like, what's my dog doing under the rug? And then my cat's humping. around him too. And I'm Probably like, humping. certainly he's like eating rice under the rug or something. Not, not the case. He's actually not even in the room anymore. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what kind of shenanigans they're getting into. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's get on to this. Uh, specifically, what are we talking about now? We're talking about Elijah Craig barrel proof store pick. So this is something that whiskey geeks have talked about for a while now. And going back to earlier 2021, Heaven Hill, <clears throat> I mean, really showers blessings on the just and unjust alike and says, hey, you know, we're going to open up Elijah Craig Barrel Proof to be store picks. And it'll be similar to Elijah Craig Small Batch in terms of age statement, um, which I mean, I was hyped for. Like, what was your reaction to this, Brian? Because I was jacked from the get go. I had zero negative thoughts about this decision from heaven hill nah fam wasn't i was not i was not looking forward why to would it. you not be a fan so to, yeah let's talk about this before we even get to a general assessment of the product but <laughs> why out of the gates would you be like nah because that makes zero sense to me well you know anyone who listens to the channels um yes evan you do need to put them on first anyone who listens to the channels and knows about my history with um with heaven hill products you know would would know where, where I'm coming from with this, you know, there's, there's been the same thing with like stag junior. This is the same thing that happened with Elijah Craig barrel proof. There's there it's, it's easy and it's talked about a lot and it's relatively easy to find. And so it's an easy product to be like, Oh yeah, I want to step into like big, like awesome, like hard to find cool whiskey. I should get an Elijah Craig barrel proof. And when you you try something like that and you, and when you try something like that and you're like, oh, this is hot as balls. Is this what it's like to be like cool and like drink rare whiskey? It's fire water and not necessarily in a positive way. I mean, there are some people who do. They're like, oh, it's cinnamon red hots. That not, not Elijah Craig barrel proof. Just hot. Yeah, stuff what are you talking or about? Young stuff. Some, <laughs> I was some like, Elijah Craig just, barrel proof is what just you listen, should just get. Let me let me get there. Let okay. me get there. There are some right. people who are like, oh man, cinnamon red hot candies. Oh, I love that. That's my favorite thing to drink. Not me, dude. So um, some people like the heat. Some people like all that big spice and in the cinnamon notes and the red hot notes and all that stuff. You know, there are times where I had um, Heaven Hill products and they were dry. They were sharp. They were hot. And again, that's, you know, some the first couple of products I tried from Heaven Hill initially made me think I don't like Heaven Hill. And so... The, it took until the the 2020 bottlings of some of these newer Elijah Craig barrel proofs to start thinking that I actually like some of these Elijah Craig barrel proofs. I stopped buying them in 18 because I just was, I couldn't do it. They just were so dry, so hot, um, tannic in a hollow way. Um, and, and I had to have someone prove it to me. I was like, let me try a sample of this. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, this is pretty good. That the B520. I was like, this is this is tasty. And I also thought the C920 was tasty. All the things they released in 2021 haven't helped the brand at all. So when I hear that they're going to do single barrel picks, the thing I think about is we still have a relatively inexpensive, relatively accessible, age stated barrel proof product on the market. And this is going to do one of a couple of things. It's going to be pulling from lower age statements, which then it's like, you know. Well, they're already you, doing that with the non-barrel proof pick. So I don't feel like it's taking away from stocks. But anyway, keep going. Sorry. I don't well, know you're with, the non- you really? with that product. You're talking about a $30 product. It doesn't matter. That's a It's a different tier of product. So this is a little bit different because, and you can see it when, when you look at the bottle. You know, Elijah Craig. We call it ECBP, but, you know, Elijah Craig small batch is barrel proof. These are Elijah Craig single barrels that happen to be at barrel strength. So maybe I'm unfairly judging them as being in similar territory because it doesn't have to be this 12 year age dated. In fact, most of them that we've seen are eight and nine year and then some being 10, some being 11. Um. 
but to me, my fear is why open up a particular lane to potentially four or five years down the line be taking away product from a good brand. Now, Heaven Hill may not have the same problem that I believe Buffalo Trace has. You know, I don't believe this whole, oh, we just didn't have good quality stag this year. And then all of a sudden, they're absorbing the junior name. And then all of a sudden, they're going to stop doing picks. And you know what, what I think? I think we're going to never see George T. Stag in the lineup again. We're just going to keep having this stag product show up. And part of me thinks maybe they ran out of, um, you know, aged juice that they could use for something like that. Um, you know, stocks like that do do kind of ebb and flow, not being able to necessarily project unlikely. out. Yeah, I know. I mean, there are a lot of people smarter than me who work on this as their job. So I don't know much. Yeah, about right. But um, there's a huge organization. But I just I just get fearful that what they're doing is taking, you know, I don't know how much Heaven Hill product you've tried in the like five to seven year age range aside from the bottled and bond product. You know, I Anything thought that oh, Heaven Hill released to me. This is to me. These are probably going to be a slight, a slight, slight, slightly older, a slightly higher barrel proof um, Ezra uh, cast strength or whatever it was called which mm -hmm. I thought was a dry, boring, hot product, exactly like what I'm describing. And so I just get fearful that it's there's going to be a lot of bad bottles if you were going after them that you would try before you got to some really good ones. That's all. Yeah. All right. Okay. Inter so that's Brian's hot take that I teased in the comments below and in my Instagram post. Um valid ish you know tbd time will tell i'm i love kyle's comment here who <laughs> heard brian i'm gonna give my take now uh, i'm gonna cancel heaven hill after this so here's my take on it so heaven hill says listen our og our top dog the whiskey that i love uh you know if i if i had to commit if i had to marry a whiskey be Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. I'm, I'm in on it. I like the profile. Even when it's hot and dry, it's still great and oaky uh, and brown sugary. Burnt caramels. I like these notes. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I warned you about the coffee. Um, and then they say, you know what we're going to do? Um, we're going to take the Elijah Craig Single Barrels, which you, Brian, have praised on this channel. Mm -hmm. As some mm -hmm. Elijah Craig single barrels, just the 94 proof ones, bangers. Agreed, 100%. Price point, mm -hmm. $30, fantastic. Killer value, one of the best. We're going to let you pick those and then bottle them at barrel proof. And I'm getting excited. Like, you know, I'm well, I'm jacked <laughs> here. The blood's rushing. Because um, that's the... That's the that's the goal. Like if I could pick an Elijah Craig single barrel, like going purely on principle, like that is exciting. Even if we're in the eight to 10 year range, because eight to 10 year old heaven Hill, some of that can taste quite old. Some Henry McKenna bottles, Lord knows how actually old the barrels are, but can taste quite old and oaky and viscous. And I've had Elijah Craig single barrels that have also been quite oaky, big cherry, delicious stuff. Uh, at 94 proof and i'm like well if you could just bottle that at cask strength we're talking about an all-timer here so that's my hope is that maybe they're going to open up some barrels that actually give us access to some all-time heaven hill crap at barrel proof that we can actually get if this is released in our community um so that's what i'm that's what yeah, i'm hoping and, but for. i mean how many so how many rebel yell picks have you tried to see, you know, well, Heaven Hill as it's, Rebel, as it's ter ter yeah, right, I'm sorry, Rebel uh, Ezra, Brooks, Ezra Brooks, Ezra Brooks, Ezra Brooks. Yeah, which, to be fair, those are five-year-old picks, and those mm -hmm. are conducted not by Heaven Hill, but by Lux Row down the road, which I don't like the p flavor profile but generally. They're doing, that the gets same, released. they're doing the same thing that the people who contract MGP are doing. 
it's not like they created this when it was a no, year but it old. is a completely different profile. Like so, the it's Lux directly Row across the street a, from the Heaven Hill. I Reserve. understand that, but it's a completely different profile in brand on the Lux Row, the old Ezra stuff. And don't so, get me wrong, I think possibly. we're gonna come down pretty similarly. No, I gotta finish my thought. The Lux Row profile is hot and nutty as balls. Um, the old Ezra Seven is fine. If it's a cold day and you just are pouring it into a tin cup, like it's good, but it's not great. You know, it's not Elijah Craig barrel proof. It's the same mash bill. It's the same distillate coming off the still, but we're talking about two different profiles post aging. So I'm not, I'm hoping this doesn't taste like old Ezra seven. I'm hoping it tastes like Elijah Craig barrel proof. Like we discussed already. So I get that there might be similarities, but yeah, <laughs> Tim, this isn't this what you're supposed to do on uh, a discussion like this? <laughs> anyway, so that's my take. My take is I'm hoping they're letting us at the profile of Elijah Craig and allowing us to pick 9 to 10-year-old barrels at that profile at Barrel Proof because that sounds great. That was what my hope was. We're going to get into my review of this whiskey in a minute, but now I yield the floor back to you. No, I mean, I'll, I'll let you keep going. The thing, so I'll just, I want to bring up a, just one specific example. That's why I asked about the the Ezra's, the five-year picks. I've tried. Yeah. Which we five, do have one. Not, we not were actually lot. given one. We were given one that actually tasted pretty good. Right. Um, right. right. But here. I've tried, uh, I've tried several others. That's the best one I've tried. I've tried several others that have been, I mean, I have a couple of bottles that are undrinkable. They are so hot. I put them in a cocktail. They make the cocktail terrible. So if you get a bottle, you can't even make a mixer. But you know, I've I've tried. This is not conclusive evidence, but you know, even with Willet, I've tried Willet products, si similar runs of barrels, at ages five year, six year, seven year, and eight year. And I tell you, I don't notice a whole lot of difference in the in the span, um, so far, of age. Um, so my fear is that, um, the, some of the brashness you kind of need, you kind of need to tick over that nine, 10 year mark to really start to balance out. Um, but I don't know, I, you know, I'll be curious to see, you know, it, it is, it's hard really to pinpoint what what the profile of Elijah Craig barrel proof is because they've had barrels that are, that are different. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, yeah. I think it's a pretty tight family. Of course, there's a variance in the quality just as there is in George T. Stag, but there's definitely a George T. Stag profile, even though there's variance there, there's a Stag junior profile. There's an Eagle rare profile. I think the Elijah Craig profile is pretty tight. Um, what would you call it then? That said, Oh, what would I call it? I would call it brown yeah, sugar. What would you say? I that say burnt caramel. I would say oak. I do think you get cashew, um, you know, a, lighter on the cashew versus like a more you get into roasted peanut on something in the Lux Row category. But yeah, burnt caramel, brown sugar, suggestion of oak on the younger stuff. On the barrel proof, the oak is, of course, more prevalent. On the fruit notes, you get some plum, you get some cherry. Um, maybe that plum ages a little bit, dries out, gets a little pruney. What would you say is the pocket of flavor for George T. Stag? Uh, George T. Stag is a little more rich, less nutty on like non-existent nut. Uh, the oak doesn't tend to get dry uh, as much. It can be very hot, um, but we're still dealing with a lot of cherry, a very cherry forward whiskey. Um, but the sweetness is more in the, I mean, it takes brown sugar into buttercream. The viscosity is really nice in there. Um, and then, yeah, like a total absence of any kind of uh, nutty spice. If you're talking spices, I mean, it, it's more like um, pumpkin pie type spices, um, more or apple pie kind of spices, not cinnamon red hots, but cinnamon like sweetened up with apple filling. All right. Is that an acceptable answer? Did I pass the test? I was trying to see how similar the pockets were because. You know, there are times where people say that they're similar products, and then there are people who are, are like, no, no you can clearly no, tell no, they're no, different no. from each no, other. No, I wouldn't know. Absolutely. So I was curious I to see if you're going to go, do. oh, it's brown sugar, toasted caramels, and oak. And I'd be like, eh, that's the same thing as Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. 
yeah. I mean, obviously, but, it's not. It's those are completely different products. Yeah. So, and I and I will. And so, what I want to interject here, real quick, too, before you either get into that review or, review or whatever else, I think what the 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 initial thing that spawned this topic in the chat, um, for us to do as an episode sometime is because, um. Elijah Craig barrel proof as it stands now has a good thing going. It comes out three mm -hmm. times a year. It's accessible. Great price point, 12 year age dated. And it seemed like yes. this to me was bucks. water. So it seems like this to me was watering down Elijah Craig barrel proof because it is Elijah Craig barrel proof. It's not Elijah Craig small batch barrel proof. It's not age dated 12 years, but it is barrel proof Elijah Craig. Um, And I, and to me, I thought, oh, this is going to water down the name of what we have. And I know, you know, I see Matthew Payson here. Every single barrel bourbon has good and bad batches. I know that. Um, but it's the it's the same kind of thing with like Old Forester. You know, they they put out it's a little different, but Old Forester started putting out these barrel strengths. They've got um they're awful. They're terrible. <laughs> I hate them and, so much. And it's gotten to the point where where it's gotten to the point because everyone can have a pick and there's so many. If somebody's like, oh, you should try this one. It's really good. I would say, is it though? Is it really? Same thing with Starlight. Starlight has so much hit or miss and there's so many people picking it up right now. Someone's like, oh, you got to try the Starlight barrel. It's a great. And you're like, is it though? Is it though? Like, how can I trust that it is? All I can do is either go by your opinion or I have to personally try it myself because the pool becomes too wide and the trust becomes too little because there's now so much hit and miss happening. That's what I was meaning initially when it was, does it tarnish the brand of what we've come to know from that's what I think you even mentioned in this chat or in this, in the stream, you know that you can trust even the worst batch of Elijah Craig barrel proof to be good. But once these right. single barrel barrels come out, I don't think you're going to be able to say that anymore. Yeah. Unless you exclude actually, the barrel pick. I agree with you. I agree with you there. I was hopeful that I would not, but I do. Um, and not that this one is bad, but let's break it down. So Eric Sawyer, Swing Nation. Eric, what What's up? What's up, Huckabee? Um, <clears throat> Eric and I meet up at, where do we pick this up? Uh, Maddie's on a Saturday was cold, super cold, starting to snow here late November, um, which they did have free food there. So shout out to Maddie's for the free food. And, uh, you know, the barrels are, or the bottles are 80 bucks a piece. We're there. We can get two. And, uh, so we did, I think we both got two of them, 80 bucks. That's a weird. Piece. You were able to get two, but yet I haven't seen one arrive in my mailbox yet. It's strange. <laughs> Well, I didn't ship Keep going. you I'm not samples yet that have been sitting here for three weeks. Anyway, um, so we get there, and you can buy a pour, an ounce, for like too much. Too much for an ounce. So I was like, yeah, let me taste it before. But it's cold as balls outside, and I'm drinking that out of a Mondo rocks glass, like the biggest rocks glass you've ever, you've ever seen. And initially, it hit me, as many whiskeys do drinking outside, for whatever reason, they're always sweeter outside. Don't know why that is. Really interesting mm -hmm. phenomenon. Really sweet. But I go, this is nutty. Like, and I told Eric that there. I was like, this is really sweet. It's big caramel for sure. But it's also nutty. And I'm like, it's kind of similar to old Ezra 7 in that nuttiness mm. category. And so as I bought a bottle and started to kind of piece it apart and have wanted to talk about this topic myself. The nose on this sucker is really nice. It's rich. You do get some nuttiness on the nose, but the sweetness is there. It's not hot at all on the nose. It lends itself. Like, it's inviting you in. It's sucking you in. Um, you get, like, a touch of, uh, like, raw mash in there. Not graininess, but this, you know, that kind of sourdough bread kind of note underneath all the sweetness. Uh, you don't get heavy oak. You get you get oak, but it's not like, oh, this is going to be a deep, rich oak. So, like, it's not bad. It, it, it reminds me of a Elijah Craig, a little bit <laughs> on the nose, but slightly nutty. But then when you get to the palate on it, 
the sweetness hits you and you're like, ooh, oh. because then it finishes like Old Ezra 7. It's not very hot, but it's pretty nutty. So it reminds me. So is this what I wanted out of Elijah Craig single barrels? No. Is it bad? No. Particularly if you like nutty whiskeys. This to me is what Booker should be. Like, if you want this intense, nutty bourbon that's complex and sweet and nutty, it should taste like this instead of the Hellfire, because I'm not a Booker's fan. <laughs> um, Booker's is just hot and nutty and spicy. Like, it's hard to, like, <coughs> really appreciate and sip and, like, sit and sip a Booker's. That's my opinion, because I'm not much of a Booker's guy. I would prefer it if it yielded a little bit more sweetness, um, like this particular barrel proof did this is to me a step above old ezra seven but very similar in the profile i mentioned i'm not a big fan of lux real profile this is more similar to that um than the elijah craig barrel proof profile i articulated earlier so am i sad i bought this bottle no i'm not really sad about it but it's not it's not the mecca that i hoped it would be have you popped your bottle yet? I have not. Are you wanting me to? Uh, it, that's totally up to you. Have you tasted that particular batch that you have? Nope. I had I, I had pulled up the new the email uh, when it came out, and I was gonna I could it I could I could pop it and drink it without looking at this. I was gonna read through the tasting notes because even the tasting oh, notes. Yeah. I, I feel I like mean, that, it, if you're gonna pop it, I wouldn't read the tasting notes. If you're not I gonna I don't pop have it. To. Well, it's whatever. I don't know. I didn't know. You started talking about yours, so I didn't know if, if you wanted me to. Well, I'm, or not. Here's the, well, here's where it's probably going to be helpful. Is uh, like, unfortunately, now there's a bias. Like, there's a bias in the air. Um, so I would want I would want you to try and calm your mind if you do assess. I don't it, have, bi I don't have biases like that though. I've got two <laughs> other. I have two other Elijah Craig barrel proofs up here. <laughs> I've got B five eighteen, which I feel like is a little more tannic. And yeah. similar to a lot of Elijah Craig barrel proofs, a lot of older yeah. Elijah Craig barrel proofs. What's the a proof little bit that hard? One? To that drink. was a hot one. That I remember yeah. that one. It was hot. Yeah, little hot, little hot to drink. Um, and then I have the uh, the B five twenty, which is a lot easier to drink. Um, and then again, this one, you know, it's a nine year. It's from Woodland Wine in Nashville. So, I mean. It, it really just depends on the progression of the night because I've had some beer. We have a blind. I don't remember how many samples are in there, Yeah, right. but I can or. pop it and taste through this too. Or I could just talk through the tasting notes. Depends on how long this segment's going to continue to go. Well, we're almost to the hour and that's where we need to shift over to the blind. So we have seven minutes left. Why don't you just hit us with those tasting notes and then maybe you can do okay. one of your videos on, uh, on the bottle when you pop it. But sure. he, and this is why I'm curious to hear eventually what you have to say about that is that how what is the variance between bottles? Because I imagine there are some hitters, you know, the mash and drum did one. So I need to reach out to Scott locally and see if we can swap some samples on these. Um, and uh, I want to see like if, if there's some continuity in the profile, which I would hope there wouldn't be on that after tasting this or if there's some out there that are more fruity and rich. Mm hmm. All right, go so ahead. This right, with the notes so this right here, said. this is a nine-year pick. It's coming in. Uh, it says it was on the seventh floor of Warehouse W. I forget how tall their floors are, but, you know, you would assume that it's going to have a lot of, I don't know, whatever. It says it starts <laughs> off, they, they start off saying it's rolling in hot. Okay. Um, opening up beautifully with classic bourbon notes of. Well, that's good. Uh, of red fruit, bourbon. toasted nuts, a touch of spice and chocolatey depth. The finish is long with exceptional balance in spice and chocolate. Perfect for the falling temperatures or a holiday gift. Oh, that actually sounds really good. For some reason, I thought it said something about red hots. Maybe I just every time I see hot no, yeah, and red, chocolate, I just read red hots. I'm in on Dude, chocolate. I don't know, my bro sounds like it's pretty good. Love chocolate nodes. Absolutely love them. I mean, personally, I want you to open it, but I'm not going to pressure you to open it. Let's get that live bottle pop nation. Let's give it up for Brian. I want to see thumbs up. I want to see thumbs up down there right now. 
And for those of you who don't already financially contribute, maybe you offset some of the cost of this bottle for Brian. Uh, if you already support on Patreon, thank you. You rock. You guys ready? Let's see how we can get yeah. this. Oh, dude, that was sexy. That's I pretty mean, good. I'm, That's pretty I'm good. Turn on a little bit right now. Ooh. That one moved me. I won't lie. The, the nose, nose on the bottle is pretty sweet right away. Let's see. I'll be bummed I'm going to leave this. Rocks and mine is like. I'm gonna and mine is. Yeah, fun. I was going to say, it's going to be mine really interesting good. if we I both get it. these. It'll be interesting. We I'm both enjoying have these super hot right takes, right? and you're like, oh, I don't like it. And I'm like, I actually love it. We're like, that's to be clear, that's not what I said. It's just not what I wanted. I actually do like it. I'm enjoying it. It's just not my mecca. That's that's what I said. But, hmm. Hmm. Break it apart for us. We're just gonna watch. I'm just gonna listen as you break this apart. Live tasting. Then I had we're a comment. Get into the blind. I had a comment. So I forget who it was. There's a guy who's in here who always talks about the uh the type of chewing that I do. He calls me like what did he say? What does he say I do with it? Like a llama or something? <laughs> then I had a whatever he says. It's meditative. meditative. I had a I had a comment on my on one of my videos earlier this week that told me to to quit chewing. That no one wants to see that. So I'm gonna chew even harder for you, Karen. Hmm. It reminds me of something that I cannot place. Let me keep trying to dig into it. But strangely, I don't think it reminds me of. And Elijah Craig knows. Maybe it reminds me it's it's soft. Like it's I'm able to get really, really deep in there and it's not stinging. I don't know how strong yours is on the the nose. No, no, it's not. It's really accessible. That's what I was saying. It's like the nose yeah, is tangible. Again, this is a hundred this is 132.8, and I can I can get right up in here. In the there's there is red fruit notes that is that are intertwined really well with the creamy soft nuttiness um i don't know what william wiley's talking about which one is he talking about? oh mash and drum he's talking about the mat yeah which i mean i'm jacked for that that sounds great and Dude, i'm gonna say something nutty crap go ahead say it i didn't i didn't think about this until right now and i'm gonna say something super controversial and you're gonna be really mad because i do didn't this all the time i didn't <laughs> i didn't think about this until right this you second. had a beer <laughs> no what's that? there are several um presently or within the last couple years eight and nine year will it picks that are distilled in kentucky which when it says distilled in kentucky on the back instead of distilled aged and bottled at will it it means it's sourced mm. that yeah. i would have to venture to say is is heaven hill Bill Bender. Probably. Do you know Bill Bender? Do you know of Bill Bender? I do not. It's cool. Oh, name, I'm though. surprised. He's um he's a Instagram guy. He's on YouTube. He um what's his handle? What's his handle? It's probably just Bill Bender. I don't know. You don't need to know him. He's a golf guy too. He smokes cigars, he has a huge beard. Um anyway. Oh, I probably know him. Of... I probably know him then, but he doesn't go he... by Bill Bender because I, I know cigar guy, goes... bourbon guy, golf guy. Uh, well, I mean, I'm 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 basically yeah. describing every metrosexual. Um, so you know, you could Depends be getting confused with somebody are. else, but we'll see. Um, okay. The controversial thing I was gonna say is this re I think this kind of reminds me of one of the Willets that I've had. Um, it's got this slightly, which is interesting for it saying it was aged on the seventh floor. It is slightly earthy, um, in a kind of clean, fresh slightly grassy way you know that when i describe that's usually positive characteristic it's slightly champagne yeah, i wouldn't say that but good for you slightly champagne silky um silky chocolate ganache um mm -hmm. and then again the red fruits are kind of the red fruits as i'm as it's continuing to open are are dissipating or as my nose is getting acclimated dissipating and the chocolate's coming out more uh okay i'm gonna go into a taste because it's um it's pretty I'm nice ready. I'm waiting with bated breath. Uh, Terrence, uh, Brian popped an Elijah Craig single barrel barrel proof after I had uh, reviewed mine. He's got a different one, so we're seeing how they compare. All right, tell us about it, Brian. 
this um uh yeah kyle basically i am more for me um this has a very juicy surge on the front a fruit nice i like that that's a big win that's why i like four roses at least certain four roses man it's <clears throat> it's a it's a big rush of of red fruits initially it's very juicy it flips to a, a decently pronounced oaky middle there's there's a healthy amount of complementary spice to that chocolate ganache note that i mentioned it is um pretty You're chocolate vibing. dominant yeah Someone had asked earlier in the chat if they would prefer a Russell's reserve pick or an Elijah Craig barrel proof pick. Really tricky. Depends on if you like drinkability or if you want something that's going to be a big bruiser. I've never had a Russell's reserve that's been a big bruiser. That said, no, they're crushable. Strangely enough, this um, this Woodland Elijah Craig pick tastes very similar to the last woodland russell's reserve pick that i had from them that was just you know big fruity chocolate bomb that and sounds great that sounds delightful. it's actually really good yeah. it's actually really great. good it's but it's it's different than um elijah craig barrel proof in terms of the batches i'm not getting the brown sugar thing I'm not getting some of the tannic qualities. Uh, Eric, this proof is 132.8. Wow. Ours is uh, like 123 something. This this makes me wonder how this is going to... I don't have another... I don't have another glass. This one, this one, I'll taste it after this. Because it has that fruity note, it's going to make me wonder how close it is to B520. Well, you have to tell us. But at this point, we're at 903. So there's clearly some variability here in these profiles, though. We we describe whiskeys with a not necessarily always similar vocabulary, but I feel like if I say a bourbon's nutty, you're like, yeah, it's going to be nutty. Whereas if you say bourbon's fruity, I'm going to be like, yeah, it's going to be fruity. So these two whiskeys seem to have a pretty big variance in profile, which is interesting and will mean that it may be a crapshoot for you. But so far, like, it's not going to lay an egg. That said, some of the prices on these may get a little lofty, and that's where we can maybe wrap this discussion. It's 80 bucks. That's more than the 12 year. So I'm going to pay for a 10 year single barrel or a nine year single barrel for 80 bucks when I might be able to get a 12 year small batch for 70 bucks. I mean, it still follows uh -huh. the $10 a year rule. Yeah, but the 12 Which people have doesn't. generally been accepting of. Yeah, and I think that's generally true. But I mean, the glory of a ledge Craig small batch barrel proof is that 12 years at $70 is an insane value in this current bourbon market. So, um, so yeah, so the I'd say the value hurts a little more than the standard Elijah Craig barrel proof profile also is a little bit younger so you're paying a little more for a little less generally it seems like but it also sounds like brian ha has a pretty good single barrel there um, it's got a lot of lingering um like heat and spice if you don't mind that tbd depends on the whiskey all right TBD. i'm gonna clean out my glasses and we're gonna line up this blind from jack jack aka mf Who he did uh, message me back on Instagram. He said he's he's watching. So just playing it chill tonight. Yeah, oh, no, he's in here this jug right now. Still waiting for CN21. Blind, I am going to um, I am gonna pour a little B520. So you're going to have advantage on me tonight because I'm going to drink a little excessively. Yep. Seems like uh, uh There's a lot more cakiness on this B520, but it's also been a little bit longer. It has a little bit more desserty profile in terms of like caramelized sugars, brown sugar. But it is sweet. 
So, Jack Jack, we are supposed to taste all of these and then reveal them at the end. Is that correct? Is hmm. that what we talked about? I believe that's the case. Tom says the $10 premiums may be justified by access. The group's doing the pick, have small audience, that then have much higher likelihood of scoring a bottle. Yeah, maybe, you know, but to me, like the, the cup wins, right? You know, it's like, can you get better for less? It's hard to tell people to go buy it then. Um, if you like the slightly tannic oak, which again is prominent in so many Elijah Craig products, yeah, Elijah I Craig barrel proof products, all. like, like, 138.8 that whatever the batch 11 I, uh, batch 10 maybe 12 i don't remember what it was um 139.4 135.6 so a lot of those have that kind of kind of drying tannic quality it's different when you know there's older juice in it i feel like it tastes it also has an older tasting oak um b520 to me kind of has that i won't lie um first taste not having this air out. Um, I think this pick is better than B520. Um, but it's different. Wow. It's um, it's a little bit more one directional. Like it's got some creamy caramel and vanilla. Big burst of fruit. That chocolate finishing. Good amount of oak. Doesn't really have that tannic quality. Not sure if it's going to grow in the glass or not. Um, it doesn't seem as expansive, D weird, to, weird to describe, um, very solid. I, um, glad mine's not bad. All right, Nathan, uh, we're going to move on here just for the sake of time. I'm going to let Brian get ready with his samples. Which, which number, where are we doing the numbers of letters? I'm sorry. I don't remember. We're doing the letters. Mm -hmm. How many were there? And there's C. four A B C D. That's There's how you B C D. Alphabet. So you That's get into it. We're gonna start with A. Got and him. you did you say you had texted me that Jug Jug said we were supposed to test them all or taste them all and then review. Yeah, and I think it's because we're we're scoring it where types of products, and I think he's grouped it. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay, you got know, it. I mean, just cool. as deduct deduction. I'm going to yeah. assume that's why, but I might be wrong. I might be giving Got too it. much away, too much of an advantage, but I'm drunk. So, well, take it easy. I'm going to have... take my sabbatical, um, do what I do. Uh, I do have the wirelesses in now, so I can probably hear you while I do my thing, but you get ready and then we'll take the folks, the kind folks through this plan. And we get, yeah. So I want to bring up just one thing, um, Kyle, that you mentioned. Um, the difference, Kyle, um, when it comes to Willet versus Elijah Craig, is that Willet has already established itself as being in, in the know. If you do not know what the barrel numbers represent, you're completely lost. You don't know who makes it. You don't know what recipe it is, if it was distilled by them, given the run. It's all a mystery, and that's that's the mystery of Will It. And there's some allure to that, but it's not tarnishing whether you come into a bad barrel or a good barrel, because everyone who drinks Willets talks about Willets, and people know when there's good barrels and when there's not good barrels. And then you kind of trust you know, there was there's still palate differences there, obviously, but it's it's a little bit more inclusive, inclusive, but exclusive of a club to be in. Um, Elijah Craig, the premise is that I'm not dis, I'm not saying that the product in this would or wouldn't, you know, be similar to a Willet will product. The conversation was, is it good or bad for the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof umbrella to set itself up as pretty reputable, even the worst bottles are still good, 
if you start introducing these picks that are just okay, is that bad for Elijah Craig barrel proof perception? That's the initial, that's, that's the, the grander question there. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how this opens up. This is going to be, uh, be interesting. I'm pretty surprised, but you know, I still agree with the thing that, um, that uh, Porkins and I were mentioning, which is, oh, wow, that's interesting, Eric. Um, the thing that um, Porkins and I were mentioning, which is, you know, barrel proof is great, but this is still, you know, probably going to be $80 or more. So would you rather have one bottle of it or three crushable 94 proof, whatever? So it really just depends on like, how you drink your whiskey and what's most important to you. Um, yeah, Eric, I've not had bottle five of the King of 2021 yet, so I'm sorry it was disappointing to you. Um, what was your experience with the bottle that was most disappointing? Because it could just be inheritive, inher it could just be, you know, the profile of what? King of Kentucky. I try to figure tainted, out the best way of saying it. Tainted vial. All right, you ready to do this blind? Start with A. Not really. So we'll, we'll do a, with it. Hang with us. We're gonna do the reveal at the end. We'll try and make it swift. I'm a little sick this week already. I haven't said it yet. I'm not trying to get you know mercy <laughs> points, but I am a little sick this week. <laughs> That's only fair, right? I mean, I was so bad two weeks ago. I'm back though, man. Kyle, oh, isn't that interesting? Inter almost all Buffalo Trace picks are better than the standard, but almost every. Weller foolproof or OWA pick is worse than the standard. So age proof product distillery bottle. That's what we're trying to nail down. Age and product is either proof. It can be I, bourbon, I, rye, I finished bourbon, time. finished rye. I don't so believe it's bourbon a test a because I can bourbon. taste and smell pretty well. I know that's not indicative. Um, I probably Classic. should. I probably should take a COVID test. Um, just, I can't even say the whole thing. It's fun. I'm, it's fun to do live. I can't even say that. Oh, shoot. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, age proof. What? Product. Product. Like, it, you know, bourbon, Distillery. dry, American whiskey, distillery, and bottle. That's correct. Bottle. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to get these all wrong. Cool. I don't have a high level of confidence right now, but I never do. So we'll see. <sighs> mm. Smells good, whatever it is. Yes, it does have a great nose. Light, but good. Oh, speaking of which, you remember that batch of barrel that we had? That barrel, single barrel that tastes like birthday cake? That was so good. I finished mm. that sample. When that was, was that? Really nice. I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Uh, I guess maybe then. It was the one you that just was... You um, trash your samples? The, 18... I, the ones I like, I sent them a sample. No, I don't. I'm going like, to no. drink this later. Okay, it's so here's a little hidden thing. My house is chaos. You know, we are, <laughs> we're constantly doing medical stuff for our daughter. We have to do homeschool and work at the same time. So the table that I'm recording on right now is also used for homeschool. It's also our dinner table. Um, we have almost a full time's jobs worth of stuff that we do for our daughter every single day. And so my coffee stand here is just full of old sample bottles from not even stuff that people have sent me from this, just old sample bottles I have. And then over in this corner are a bunch of those sample bottles. So I just have sample bottles coming out the wazoo. <laughs> so it's um it gets a little chaotic yeah it gets a little chaotic i hear that i so well we'll, we'll save that for another show anyway all right let's do this sample a hmm. Tough. Jeepers. Is it though? Is it though? Yeah, it is. <sighs> Hold on. 
Stand for a minute. All right, I'm good here, ready to move. Well, we can once we write it down, we can talk about it, and then we'll do the review yep. later. So, yeah, we can I give am people good. Something. I am good to go. Okay. All right. Um, nice nose, sweet, very sweet. Yes. Just. Sweet. <laughs> it's just sweetness. It's like confectioner sugar and honey. Um, you know, yep. maybe a touch of maple, but just a touch. Um, so very straightforward. The palate, uh, not offensive. The not hot. Not super weak, but not hot. Not nutty either. Um, so if it's not grainy, doesn't taste young. Doesn't taste old either. Um, those. Uh, you know, flavor notes are, um, you know, vanilla. Like I said, what the nose carries over. It's it's a little floral. It's got some honey. Um, it's it's just a sweet bourbon that probably is high corn without being dickle, um, but is in the six year range. That's my guess. And I'll tell you what bottle I think it is in a minute. But. Do you have anything to add to that little oh, rundown? Dude, it's, I mean, from the nose, right away, sweet. It is cherry, honey, like viscous, like not not overly viscous, but good mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. So it's like cherry, berry, honey. Yep. I mean, pretty wreck to me. Pretty recognizable flavor pocket. Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Or it's a killer craft whiskey. <laughs> I mean, I don't see how it could be from the from the minute I smelled the bottle. It it has to be a it has to be a SAS product. It has to be under yeah. the Buffalo Trace yeah. umbrella, like a hundred percent. It's not as yeah. fruity as like Blanton's. It's not as weak and lightly grainy as Buffalo Trace can be. But it, but I've had Buffalo Traces that taste like this. So I, but it's a little... I did, I do think it's Blanton's. I put 93 proof. I said six years old. I think it's Blanton's. I think it's, I think it's EH small batch. I mean, it's mm. like pretty, that has a pretty crushable flavor profile. And this is crushable. This was like to me that. a little bit more like straightforward though. So you put a hundred proof. Yeah. I don't mean, I don't know what the age is, but I put a hundred proof. Yeah. Bourbon, Buffalo Trace, E.H. Taylor. I mean, it's just I mm. to me that's iconic. Like the 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 best valued Buffalo Trace you can get on like yeah. if you want something that's more than just a cheap drinker. I did like that. It was enjoyable. It's been a while since I've had it though, so I'm very delicate but enjoyable. We're we're yep. we're in consensus on the profile though. All right, B. Here we go. Yeah, even listening to you talk about it, I like that because I'm like, oh, yeah, I think he's describing the things that I'm mentioning. Yeah, right. Yeah. And we're we're we're, we're very close together in our guesses here. Dude, we, right. are, we are like brothers. Whiskey brothers. Definitely. Is there a podcast called Definitely. the Whiskey Brothers? No. <laughs> We should make a shirt that says, is there a podcast called the Whiskey Brothers? And on the back, it says Injury Proof Podcast. <laughs> I like that. That hits me in my funny bone. I like that one. <laughs> B. Hmm. This one's a little bit tricky for me. There's a... It still smells... Vague. A very pronounced... There's a note that I'm pulling out that's like, oh, interesting. There's a there's a smell that smells slightly mineral to me. Like rocks. Kind of smells like rocks. Sweet rocks. <laughs> mm. 
see there's a couple mm. of notes here that are really interesting. I have this this flavor that I had from when I was a kid that I don't know the name of it, but I'll explain. I'll explain it in a minute. That's just like, that's 100% what this tastes like. Like the taste of um, wood chips. That's not what I was talking about, but I'll tell you in a minute. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Tom says he has popped Discovery Batch 6. Tom, I'm super curious, dude. I want to know how, you, dude. how prevalent you. is the Dickel. I passed on that one, so I'm really curious. Like, I want to be proven wrong. For your sake, I hope it rocks. Um. That hat is bothering me. All right. I almost forgot I was wearing a hat. What's on your hat? I was wearing my Evan Williams hat. It's the, oh. it's a, uh, hold on. Let's see if I can get closer here. Lux Row or nice. Rebel or something. I don't have, Look, I don't have my very focus. classic dad hat style. My focus isn't on the right spot. Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. I have a guess on what this is. Get out of here. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this must be interesting TV, guys. Don't watch us him and haw about this. That's why I said we need to have some music that we could play during this time. It gets really vibey. We just need someone to make some music. Ah, oh, my pencil tip is broken. I need another one. All right, I'm ready when you are on number two or number B, I guess. I'm fine. All right, um, light as well on the nose, but there's a funky. There's a but there's both sweetness and a funkiness to this one. The other one, not a lot of funk. This one, there's some funk, not nutty necessarily, but kind of a weird grainy musty i couldn't really pin it on the nose but i tasted it when i tasted it, it felt like it filled up this my olfactory senses um mm -hmm. there is some graininess like a little some raw grain like this isn't very old you know based on the both the nose and the palate um it reminded me on the palate of you know those those wafer can't or not candies, but these like they were oh, like yeah. vanilla wafers yeah. that had like frosting in them, and then they had like the checkerboard pattern on them. Yep, that's what it reminded me of. Um, and so this kind of weird, musty, low quality, super sweet treat that parents gave us in the nineties because they were trying to murder us and bump us off. I one hundred percent see that. Yeah, I know. I was like, once I was like, oh, like that took me back. It's like <laughs> you just go in your mind to that place because I mean, like, it kind of tastes like before. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Like uh, vanilla pudding pop a little bit too. Man, now I'm just thinking of childhood. Vanilla uh, pudding pop. Um, it's a it's weird. It's both got youthful notes, kind of some lighter yeah. notes, 
but then some darker kind of toasty like exaggerated oak notes i don't know what to i don't know what to describe that as like mm-hmm. like it, maybe it's a toasted product or something with like a little more char a little more toast uh, to it i wrote down my answer but now i want to second guess it because i after hearing you say that i don't think it's toasted but it i don't may i don't i didn't write it down as something toasted ages. but it yeah so um hearing you say that makes me think based on the profile and having tasted i think this product maybe before fusion bardstown fusion possibly what i wrote mm. down was I get grain. I don't get spice. I don't get rye. So I'm thinking a mm. weeded bourbon. I'm thinking 100 proof, 110 at the most. Relatively easy drinker. So five years, 107 proof. I'm thinking this is Rebel Yell single barrel. See, I initially thought weeded as well. I changed it from weeded. Um, you know. I initially thought it was weeded because it kind of reminded me of Maker's. Because of that kind of youthful little flair oh, thing yeah. that it had, that kind of yeah, weird. No, I know makers would... pretty well. I'd be surprised. See, if those I, makers, but... I, yeah. And so I think as I started, as I was drinking on it more, it had more of that like kind of toasty barrel thing. And I was like, I don't, I was like, I think this might not be. And instead of that, I switched it. And I think maybe it's like Old Forester Signature. Oh, yeah. Like the Hunter Proof mm-hmm. Old Forester. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I it's wouldn't been, expect a little, a little more bit. oak out of that. Yeah, it's been but... a little bit since I had it, so I don't remember. But that was like, I was like, it seems pretty like accessible, like bottled and bondy. So yeah, why not go with that? So you're at 100 proof. Would you write for age? Five year, 100 proof, old Forester signature bourbon. Okay, ride bourbon, I guess. All right, see, let's go. I'm going to have you run us through this, the next two first, since I went first this time. <sighs> hmm. um, I talked to my buddy Aaron by a text. He said he's still going to get us that uh, banger sample lineup together, the the lineup which i mean that's all we're gonna do that night (laughs) i don't know that you've even talked to him about what this is well i don't know what what they are but so aaron had he's the guy who sent us the ezra brooks centennial um which i which i went and found i know you did i know you did so you know what and you know what the one that i got is a little bit better than the sample i finished the sample i took it and i and i sampled it out with my store that you always see me in I took it up yeah. to the people who work yeah. there Tim, so they could try yeah. it. And um, Tim wasn't there, but I took it up to the oh. girls. And um, and they're like, oh, it's kind of low proof. It's kind of funky. But this Dude, the one that I, I got, proof, I think, tastes a touch, touch better. Proof people, people who give themselves over to proof. I just, that chaps my butt cheeks. Like I think they're still getting into whiskey so, so much. much. It's a, it's a noob mistake. Hey Sawyer, um, what did you drink your sample of the Centennial? Because I gave him what was what I had left. Uh huh. Did you have it? Did you like it? Anyway, I'm sure you liked it, but tell me what your thoughts are. See, here we go. Lachaim. I'm not gonna lie. I don't know that I have any clue what this is. It's hard. To t- I mean, the, the noses on these are are not bad, but they're pretty nondescript. <laughs> It's not like, oh, let's go, buckle up. Hmm. So we got A, B, C. Eric said it was good. I had it. I liked it. That's what I like to hear. Eric, um, Saturday, you want to go to the simulator? You want to bang some balls, as they say? Oh, dude, if you guys are having a dude's party where you're banging balls, let me know. Definitely. I mean, if you want to come up to Milwaukee and bang some balls with us. I've gone further to bang balls. Nice. Man. Gosh. 
there's just it's so nondescript. <laughs> like my notes are, what the heck are these notes? I like this. Um, yeah, these are not bad whiskeys, um, but they're not pronounced whiskeys. Dude, I, I do not. I do not know what this is. <clears throat> Proof is going to get me on this one, I think. Oh, Jug Jug got a 10-year redemption ride. Dude, let's go. That ride is killer. Killer. I'm a redemption 10 ride evangelist because it's fantastic. Uh, Brian, have you had the Heaven Hill 7-year uh, release? No, the bottom one. Yeah. Mm-mm. My dad picked me up one in Texas this week for 38 bucks, so I'll try it when I go down there. Next week. I sure would be a lot cooler if it was six years and 13 bucks, but be a lot cooler if you did. Yeah, I cool agree. Did. Um, I have one Dude, of those let's left. T- let's just hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let's go back to an hour and a half ago when we started the topic about arguing about Heaven Hill. Do we honestly remember a time where they had a hundred proof six year on the market for I do, I do. That was dollars. Early in my career, um, I was into bourbon for a couple of years before that fell $13. off. And I drank a good case of that, but it was only Kentucky. $13. So I would load up on a few $13. when I went down there. $13. It was ridiculous. Yeah. $13. Cheaper than water. $13. <laughs> I'm away. Oh, it was so good. I didn't. And even when people were buying them up because it was going away, I didn't stock up on them. I didn't do it. I didn't do yeah. it, Drew. Why didn't I do it? Good for you. Because you're. You're kind. You let other people have it, and you didn't feel the need to hoard. It a big $13. problem with our our community, not Nathan, but the rest of the community, is this propensity to hoard, um, and it's to hoard multiples of one that just sit below. Like to have a collection is fine, but to hoard multiples of one, like how often do you reach for that? You know, given all the others you have. Yeah, that's but what if, I'm could like. you imagine if when you hoard something that I'm not going to drink on the regular? Could you imagine that if you knew that was happening, though, you just bought like five cases and then you literally just drink it every other day? But I wouldn't How cheap that. that would be? Oh, it'd, it'd be, be so really cheap. cheap. Yeah, if I was a budget drinker, if that's what I cared about, then it'd be a really good idea. <laughs> like if you were a Heaven Hill white label six-year drinker, if that was yours, man, you got screwed. You got majorly screwed. Because you were just drinking great bourbon all the time for very little money. And I do hope you were the ones who hoarded it. If you were the the early adopters, as they say. Because it was really good. Um, really, really good for $13. Really robust, full of flavor. Speaking of really good for $13, what's this? I have a guess. It's the proof is throwing me though. It's kind of oaky. I'm gonna write dude. it down anyway. It tastes like it's got some age, but how much? I don't know more. So than I'll push age. back, even though we haven't written down because I'm gonna let you talk. I don't think it's that oaky. It's not terribly grainy. It's not big. But it's got mm. a nice sweetness. I will say that. I've not written down my product yet because I don't know where it's from. I'm going to go with my gut. Uh, All right. Tell us, walk us through whenever you're ready, and then I'll come tell you what I think about it. Um, So it's got like a subtly leather, subtly oaky profile, some sweetness, and then lingers with spice. Some Something tells me it's like Wild Turkey 101. No. I don't drink no. Wild Turkey 101, so I don't know. 
It's definitely not. What'd you um, just grab? Uh, I'm about to taste it, and then I'll tell you what I grabbed. But I already wrote down my answer. Nope, it's definitely not what I thought it was. Definitely not. I thought um, the proof was deceptive, so let me just run you through. Uh, I thought it was young, but not too young. I thought it was six years, um, you know, reasonable. Um, proof was tough, but I thought this is so nondescript, and it's got some fruitiness, and it's good generally. Um, but I thought we're still in the Buffalo Trace family. I thought this was standard Buffalo Trace or Buffalo Trace single barrel. And so I wrote 90 proof. But what I just pulled was Buffalo Trace single barrel and this does have more oak you are correct it is a little smokier than the buffalo trace buffalo trace is big sweetness and fruit so i'm i'm feeling really good that a is from buffalo trace whereas this one likely is not um that said wild turkey 101 is nutty it is it's it's yeah, a much i don't know i than this. i honestly so couldn't I a, tell you last time i drank it it but it's slightly medicinal and it's slightly leathery and so i'm like yeah i don't know what that could be i, I guess it could be wild guess. turkey so, so what i wild said turkey 101 okay good guess um i think it's evan williams single barrel now having mm. smelled the buffalo trace i think it's i think it's lower proof than what we think it is and i think it's evan williams single barrel What's or it may be the new proof? evan it's like 87 or 86 or something oh, wow um Oh, but, they got the new uh, one. Though. It could be they the got, new what Evan seventeen ninety. Yeah, right. That's right. It could be that as well. So we'll see. We'll see. What... I'm just gonna write those down. Dude, if, I want to lie. Williams, if this is if this is seventeen eighty three, I'll go out and buy a bottle tomorrow because I actually really I think I kind of like this. Yeah. Um, no, I like it too. It's it's it solid. Um, and especially if it's if it's a budget pour. Oh it's shoot! A great budget pour. We should be comparing. Did we even give our rankings last time? Because he said, if yeah, anything, he wants to know no, our rankings. Did. Yeah, okay. we did. So yeah. I got to keep track so of this for rankings for us today. I, I keep some of these samples. So, um, yeah, my rankings are pretty clear so far. Okay, are we on D? Mm. In a minute. This Buffalo Trace single barrel I have, it's just a grocery store pick. I've had two of these. Oh, my gosh. It's the best one I've ever had. It's really good. Really, dude. Really I just good. I just went back to um the sample B, and it's got like all this graham crackery type sweetness. It reminds me of, do you know those um the what are they called the um stroop waffles? It tastes like a stroop waffle compared to sample C. Isn't stroop waffle? Is that what the the like it's not actually cracker, cracker snack thing? What did I say the thing was? What was the, what are the things called that I was describing? You said a vanilla wafer, like the the wafer. Cookies. No, no, yeah, they're wafer, but they got a frosting between them. They're strip, like they're yeah. But yours, yours are the dry. Like yours are like the dry waffle. Yeah, they're very ones. dry. Yeah, but there's the a cream layer the frosting stroop, in between. The yeah. stroop waffle is like the baked ones with caramel inside. I don't know this. I have no idea what that is. So, Jug Jug anyway. says seventeen eighty three is swill, and I will never forgive its bourbon night. Oh, so that's probably not what he sent us. <laughs> probably not 1783. Uh, Kyle, so I actually looked led, for that, um, and I think I either have finished that pick or there's only like a swallow left in that pick. So Brian B, I don't know. It definitely is not B me. Is, but j jumped into our stream and just decided to take a hot take. Listen, I love Matt Super Porter. Fan. I do, and that's fine. That's whatever. I don't care. Do what you want. <laughs> He's great, so no problem here. No, no shame in that game. All right, level D. Here we go. <sighs> Who would not like Matt Porter? Really, He's just a swell guy. Like murderers, because he's so hard to catch. He's an entertainer for sure. He's something. D level D. Hmm. Interesting. That's what I like to hear. This just took a turn. Took a turn. 
Ooh. All right. This has got some it's got some stuff going on. I yeah, just let me. I haven't even sniffed it yet. I'm just writing down. It's not my Even fault. My you bladder, don't have to sniff. My bladder is filling up right now. I can feel it. Hmm. Not what I expected. Wafer crisps. That sounds right, Scorpio. Wafer crisps sounds right, but let me Google it real quick. Wafer crisps. Yep. Hundred. Uh, no sugar wafers. That they're Elmer sugar wafers. But basically, we're in the same park because this stuff came up. So, no, it's not Atkins Diet Wafer Crisps. It is these. Let me, I'll drop the link in here. It's not the strawberry ones. There's vanilla ones too, but sugar wafers. I think that's, I think they're called vanilla sugar wafers. If anyone's wanting to know the score of the game, oh, yeah. uh, Cowboys are up oh, 20 to yep. 10, and that's we're good. almost to the end of the found- third. Guys, it is. Uh, they make them still. I gotta go get them. They're Keebler vanilla sugar wafers. Dude, this is what a trip down memory lane. I'm getting, I'm fire. getting teary right now. It's bizarre. I feel weird. <laughs> still non. Uh, a let what I won't say nondescript knows, but less descript. Tom says Disco 6 is making him sad. I'm sorry, Tom. Is it Big Dickle? <coughs> yeah, the nose mm. is not descript. Here's what I think this Joker did. I think Jack Jack was like, I'm gonna pick four whiskeys that are similar, similar as I, I can make them. I'm gonna bottle those suckers, send them to these guys, and see what they can do. There is a chance that Jack Jack has given us four different single barrels of a particular product. They're all the same. I'm gonna say that. That there's a chance oh. he did that. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't. I think the flavor is a little too varied for that, but that would be really interesting if that happened. Yeah, I mean, the flavor is varied for sure. The color is very like similar, massive. though. So, like, it's not, yeah, it's not out of the, it's not yeah, the out heat of the presence ebbs and flows too. Like, I thought one was very low proof, very easy to drink. Two was a little like sharper. Three was also very easy to drink. Four, I don't know yet. Hmm. Four is a little sharper, too, a little hotter. But four is uh, deeper than the rest, probably. Um, dang. <laughs> I have to contemplate this one. Tom says. Disco six, not big dickle, but it's definitely there. No balance. Blend is all over the place. Flawed. Flawed. I mean, flawed is not a tasting note. What are you tasting, Tom? Hit me with some notes, bro. What's off-putting to you? What are you tasting? And you're like, no, I don't like that. Casey found disco four last week at MSRP. Whoa. Yeah, I will buy that. I have two bottles. Bunkered that I will certainly drink. Um, so yeah, that's a great one. That is fantastic. Uh, Wigmaster says old 1783 is garbage, new one good. I've not had either one to my knowledge. Jug Jug wants to get the Bardstown Ferrand. Have you tried that, Jug Jug? I can't nail this one down. I have no barometer, any kind of measuring stick for this one. 
Jug Jug hasn't tried. Hey, Jug Jug, uh, appreciate you sending this blind. So um, why don't you send me your address on our Instagram thread? I got to send a couple other packages anyway. Um, I'll send you a sample of the Verand as a thank you for sending a blind. Meanwhile, uh, Porkins and William Wiley are like, dude, what the hell? <laughs> so you guys too, I owe you guys. We'll get you. Like we're gonna take care of you boys at some point. Oops, sorry, Cap. Send you the mega blind. Huckleberry says he's cracking the Spaniard. Finds it delightful. Cheers, bro. I'm glad. Yum. It's a tough one. All right. I got to rank them. Yeah, this one's really tough. I don't I wrote down something, but I don't think it's right. So wait, just give me one more minute. We got a minute here. We gotta wrap this up soon, but and I gotta taste A again. Ma'am, A is so drinkable. I mean I liked A a lot. I did. I think I picked it right. <sighs> Budge monkeys. Hmm. Porkins, let's go, man. I don't I'm I'm down with anything. Rum, Armagnac, cognac. I'll take it all. Blah 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 blah. blah. This is tough. I, I I have no idea what this is. It's not what I wrote down. Uh, ah. I'm out of water. <sighs> to see what Jug Jug said. Taste C again and think banana pudding. Hmm. Normally sensitive to banana. I did not think banana with that one, but maybe heavy on the graham cracker. But shoot. Okay. All right. Uh, dude, I after that flight, this probably isn't fair. <clears throat> after that flight, I went back to. This Elijah Craig barrel proof pick. So decadent. Good for you. All right. Um, are you ready? I'm going to go with my gut. I'm not going to change. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm ready. Tell me about what you thought of uh, sample four. D. Um, sample four D. You know, uh, timely to our episode. Um, I thought it tasted like uh, creamy, slightly nutty, slightly spicy. I think it's, I think it's under the Hel heaven Hill umbrella. I think it might be a, Elijah Craig, uh, single single barrel, um, mm. creamy, accessible, ride bourbon, uh, had some oak to it, but it had some spice to it. Um, so it was kind of weird to me um, in that regard, trying to place it. But the more I sat mm. on it, the more I was like, oh, it's kind of got that like the good. It's when you get Heaven Hill nuttiness in a good way where it's yeah. integrated well. It's really creamy. You get the like <laughs> nutty creaminess more so than just straight yeah. peanut butter. Yeah, so That's I almost Marlene. changed it. I almost changed it to Henry McKenna because I just think it's hotter than Elijah Craig small batch. Um, but I went with I my gut. Henry I thought, you know what? This may be Wild Turkey 101. Hmm. Uh and, and particularly an older 101. Like maybe it's a dusty. Maybe it's maybe it's a wild turkey release. I don't know, but I thought I said I think it's eight years old. I think it's one on one. Um, and I put wild turkey. I'm just like going with the gut here, but 
All right, so let's uh, let's find out what we got here. We're gonna start with A, and again, I don't a point for whoever's closest on age and proof, and then a point for product, which we said bourbon on all of these. So I'm just gonna eliminate that category. So a point for distillery if we get that right, and a point for the bottle if we get that right. Excuse me. That was gross. All right, A, here we oh, go. I have everything. I, all the things are still in here. Even from last time. A, I gotta sort through them. You're trying to open them. Good grief. This is so hard. Oh, yeah, because he taped them. This is four. This is two. We did letters, right? Yes, we did letters. This is so oh, okay. how do you do this? This I is hate one you so much. Hold on. God. One, two. I dropped one. Hold on. It doesn't even matter. I, I, you must cheat. Um, A is E. H. Taylor Small Batch. You yes. That was really loud. That was really loud. No, you nailed it. You friggin' nailed it. So, dude, from the nose, uh, it's like it was a tell. Well, yeah, I just thought it was a little bit lower proof. It was so I have mm. E. H. Taylor Small Batch behind me, and I don't remember it tasting like that, but. Good job, man. Good for you. <laughs> so Brian gets one for proof. We both get the distillery, and he gets the bottle. The age, though, what did you put for the age? Five. I don't know. We just don't know. I, I'm going to say neither one of us gets a point on age because ne neither one of us knows. Hold on. I'm not keeping track of points. What do we? What, who did what? What did you say? You get. Uh, you got the proof because you said 100 proof. I said 93. I thought okay. it was Blanton's. So you got both proof. got distillery. We both got distillery. You got bottle. So now you're up three to one after one round. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Gosh. All right. Number two slash letter B. This is the one that um, was my least favorite, just for the record. Oh, it was mine too. Um. Yep. So real quick, I got. Yeah. So interesting. Oh, I didn't look at it. You want to reveal what was it? Um, early times bottled and bond. Mm, funky. Yeah, I mean, I did think early times was funky, so that's not terribly surprising. It's just been a while since I've had early times. What did you put for proof? I put a hundred. A hundred. A hundred proof. Screw you. Uh, what'd you put for age? Uh, five years. I don't know if we know what this is, do we? I also put five. It's early time spoil and bond. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's probably four, but we both have five, so it doesn't really matter. You get a point for proof, um, and then neither one of us got a point for anything else. So mm -hmm. now it's one to four. So one, two, one, two, three, four. Hold on. Take a break. All right. I'm going to change the battery, and then I've been holding it. So, Brian, do you have any, like, soapbox you want to get on? No, you should get a uh, charger for your camera so that you can charge the batteries while you're recording. That's what I do. Is that a thing? Is that a thing that people do? Well, it, uh, well, you'd have to look. Your camera might be different than mine. I know you're rocking a Fuji system. Mine has a grip yeah. that has an adapter that allows me to charge the batteries. Uh, yeah, with, yeah. And I keep it yeah. on there. So I, I could buy that special grip. But it's a pretty low profile camera, the XT30. So I'm mm -hmm. not like, oh, I you know, really want to weigh this thing down. But all right. Um, so I'm down. I'm getting my butt kicked so far. That's evident. Um, I'll be back in a second. Try to go through, see if there's anything in the chat. Let's go. Be, yes, I am in Louisville. I live here in Louisville. Oh, look at that camera getting back online. Noise. Yeah, you guys see, I almost, I almost dropped it. It was really bad. Yikes, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you guys yeah. talk for a minute. Hit Brian with any questions you have, and I'll be back in a second. Oh, gosh. Don't hit me with any questions. Won't be able to answer them. Any questions? Ugh. Sorry for the yawn, guys. It's late where I'm at. Kids are exhausting. Oh, boy. Yeah, it was a hard loss. Yesterday, Scorpio. Hard loss. 
Tom, you need to do a shoot me a message. We can figure out what to do about this four roses, dude. Um, I will be up uh, the weekend of the 18th going to um, my wife's family's time. Uh, Terrence, no, I'm Eastern time. Drew is on Central time. Um, going up to see my family, my wife's family. So we'll be up in that area at that time. If that's helpful. Shoot me a line. Man, two yawns in one time. Drew gets here in the chat. The uh, the chattering stops, and all of a sudden, I'm exhausted. But um, I kind of want to try, since we're not trying any things anymore, this um, B518. Poor touch of that. Ooh, it just smells more tannic. I'm coming. Okay, so going into this last round, I basically have to sweep. No, no, we got two rounds left. We're good. You ready? You ready for C here? Yeah, I just poured so myself C a little B five one eight to get. C me was the one the where like of... maybe Evan Williams, but I was like maybe Buffalo Trace, and uh, yeah, I'm feeling not so great about this, but. 1792 bottled in bond. What did you yeah. put for age on this one? Uh, five year 101 because I said it was wild turkey. Yeah, because yeah, you so you got proof again, and that's well, I got Sazerac at least, but I didn't get the distillery actually. So you got a point age it's bottled in bond so we're gonna say age stated four years that gives you another point which takes you to six I have well, why would we say that points. it gives me another point how many what did you say the age was i said six that's still i mean i don't think you can get an age statement off something like that just just scratch all right, that all right all right and then it's five to one what difference does it make i'm getting my booty handled exactly anyway. what difference doesn't make true Nothing doesn't make a difference. All right, last one was really interesting. Oh man, interesting... Kyle's this this different Kyle is bringing up some good questions for both. I would say for you, maybe you don't scrutinize flavor as much as I do. For you and I, and anyone else in the chat, like how Kyle dare Randy. you insinuate such a thing? Um, Kyle, here's the deal. The answer here's is the deal. no. So, so I would say I would agree with you. I do not get sick of scrutinizing flavors. But sometimes I wish I could turn it off. And the only time I feel like I've been able to turn it off is if I'm in very engaging, meaningful conversation with somebody. And and those are my favorite moments because honestly, it hasn't mattered what it is that we're drinking. It, it's just really good time. And if it's something that is a good pour, it only makes it better. I've had some nights where I've had some incredible pours with incredible conversation. It's been very, very meaningful. But... It's just part of me. It's just one comes from the other. But there are a couple of, I feel like there's been maybe a handful of times where I've been like, I should just stop. Maybe I'll learn to enjoy it without. But I don't think I could ever, I don't think I could ever turn it off. So it's not that I get sick of it, but there have been a couple of times where I've been like, eh, maybe I should just stop. Hey, I think I got a point for age on the 1792. You're just pulling for whatever you can. I need it because I like I how I like how I said I like how I said. Oh, there's no way to really guarantee it. Let's just scratch it. And you're like, okay, sounds hey, good. And you're like, oh wait, just it could potentially lean it. in my direction. Let's count it. I'm calling it the peanut gallery. That's fine. I would l let me be clear. I was more than willing to give you that one. Um. All right. <laughs> Real quick. That's really interesting, four. though. That that if their if their products a minimum of seven years, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize so we're gonna that. wrap pretty this old. up. We're going to wrap it up on the tasting, and then we'll let this devolve. We'll just chit-chat, no problem. But I want to get this wrapped up for the people who need to go to bed. Um, so <clears throat> number four, I had said, this is it tastes older. It's got some oak, and I don't know. It's in the 100, 101 proof. What did you say on age and proof? I thought it was maybe like an 11-year um, Elijah Craig pick. So I said 94 proof, 11 years old, Heaven Hill Elijah Craig. 
Yeah. Well, you're right. You're wrong about the proof. Uh, you were right about the distillery. It's Henry McKenna. It's Henry McKenna. Hmm. So you take the W again, which was, to be clear, was my second pick. I did say that was clear. So it knows, like it's clear that I'm not a total scrub. I was just wrong and I lost. So I'm a scrub, just not a total scrub. Good job, Brian. Nailed it. That was a good one. It was a good one. What was your order? What did, you, some... what did you like? What, what was I liked. These? I liked A the best. Um, <laughs> I liked D second best. I liked C third best, and I liked B last. This is I didn't really care. For this B. is classic. That that's a classic. What I would assume for you and me, Drew, because I think mm -hmm. I've mentioned before that I think that you are or you've expressed, and I obviously just agree drew likes more of that buffalo trace sweet whatever kind of profile and you know the the other one i thought had a little it was a little weird it was a little disjointed but i think it had a little bit more oak to it and so the only difference that i have is i have da and you have ad so it just goes yeah. to what like our foremost preferences are between the two of us right but That's we both fun. thought those were good whiskeys yeah for sure Sweet. Well, what do you guys want to talk about now? Because I still got energy. No, we didn't do this last week, but that does conclude the agenda. So real quick, um, just ways you can follow along with the journey. There are links below to follow the channels, my channel, Brian's channel down below. Also to support on Patreon. If you want to make sure that you get access to the eight year MGP pick we have coming through Dance and Go Distillery, also Seal Box. It's going to launch in the next couple weeks. You want to Make sure you get in on that. You need to become part of the Patreon community. Uh, we'll have one final pick from Dancing Goat likely coming next year, a toasted rye, also MGP. Um, and then we've got the uh, Middle West Spirits pick. God knows when that's actually going to land, but I, I hope soon because it was freaking good. <laughs> um, and then we're trying to figure out what the next pick will be. We'll likely do it in January sometime. Maybe New Riff. We've been kicking that around. That's easy for me to get to, but I, this winter i do want to travel so i'm open to going somewhere exotic so we did throw out uh you know a feed for requests in the patreon community as well and there are a lot of different things out there but tbd on what the next one will be but thankfully i mean big thank you to nation our first couple picks the starlight picks excuse me the first dancing goat pick sold out no problem. And that's huge. Like knowing that we can move barrels helps us get more barrels, helps us get you more unique picks. And hopefully over time you're like, yeah, I know I can count on Drew and Brian to pick a banger. Um, Tom said he revisited the dancing goat pick and he said, you know, he affirmed the it opens up. Hey, you know, let this sucker sit for a little bit and then it'll explode with flavor for you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, so that's it. Anything, Brian, you want to add business wise before we just cut this? No, thing I mean I've, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure everyone who's hung out with us long enough uh, follows us both on YouTube. If you don't, I never plug this. I never plug it in my local channels. I just hate self promoting. It's the number one thing that I just don't do. I just kind of just do my thing. I do it constantly. Then, <laughs> yeah, I just I just do the thing and then complain like why is it not getting more attention? I you did just have send it out into the ether. I did have a low key goal of hitting 2000 subscribers before the end of the year. And I'm at 1.85. So Let's I go. don't think we it's really it, likely, man. but all I'm saying is if you are listening right now or following the channel and, uh, and you're not following me, head over to YouTube, abandoned bourbon, hit that subscribe button. That would be sick. I would be incredibly appreciative. And, uh, I give some content that's way more, way more uh, like hyper focused nerdy niche specific than drew so um wow but it'd be great to see over there rude. i don't know some of my stuff's pretty nerdy dude i've gone really really deep on a few brands you go really really deep on maybe the flavor profile but yeah um, hey well we talk about what's coming up what's coming up before the end of the year you got some stuff coming up before the end of the year on the I do channel? real quick though i we'll talk about that in just sec kyle did say hey um what were the whiskeys again? <laughs> A, which was my second favorite. Um, no, that was my first favorite. 
your second favorite was E.H. Mm -hmm. Taylor, small batch. Yeah, B, which was both of our dumpsters, was early times, which was not bad, but it was not great. Three, which was fine, was good. What the heck was three? C. It was a surprising 1792 pick. Bottle of the month. Oh, yeah, 1792 bottle of the month, which I did not pull banana out of, but I will revisit in the moments to come. And then D was quite good. And that was a Henry McKenna pick. Uh, thinner Henry McKenna, but very good still. All right. So that's it. That's the end of the official show, I guess. And now we're just going to hang out here because why not? I got to find banana in here somewhere. Because why not? Why not? And then I poured my E.H. Taylor next to the E.H. Taylor we tasted because they didn't taste similar to me based on memory, but they may taste identical now. I see how you can get banana pudding out of that. It's bananas really subtle. I would have said like vanilla pudding with vanilla wafers. Um, yeah, the banana's really subtle. But anyway, so here's an interesting thing: if you taste different bottles of a small batch product, is you will find variants sometimes, particularly in small distilleries and a Sazerac product, E.H. Taylor small batch. I would expect minimal variants. Nose wise, minimal variants. It may just be a memory problem, but <laughs> sometimes, like particularly 1792 full proof, I've had standard full proofs that I was like, oh, it's really good. And then I've had standard full proof. I'm like, this is not very good. So there, I do think there is some variance in batch, but then also your palate's like always changing. So that is yep. a factor as well. <sighs> Scorpio just uh, subscribed to your channel. Big shout out, Scorpio. Thanks, dudes. Everyone jumping in. Thanks. Yeah. What about yeah, it's weird. I mean, we have a yeah. lot of local Louisville groups, but the problem with the local Louisville groups is that everyone who has a YouTube channel or a podcast always blasts about it. And I just don't want to be another one of those. I just don't want to be another problem one of those. Is, and so Yeah, I... I totally hear you. I totally hear you. But the problem is with that is like you then are at the mercy of the algorithm, which I will say, if you produce content, good content over time, eventually you'll hit the algorithm. Eventually you'll just mm -hmm. get it. Um, but you can also do some work to just say, hey, squad, I made this. I think it's cool. Do you like it? And if people let, watch it, great. If they don't, great. You know, it doesn't matter. But to just share it and say, hey, here it is. I made this. Like, I think it's that's just a tricky. Thing. I think it it's takes I think it takes I... courage. Like, I think it's yeah. I think it's I, I think you should do it. I think you should blast. It's just, I it's just blast. Tricky. It, it's tricky for me because I it it's just weird. Like, you, I don't the click baby click baby lines and like the thing of you know about the the whiskey like these are nice i like the streams because people can can choose to come in and there's a little bit of like there's back and forth with everyone right the thing that's tricky about just the youtube in general is that if somebody really wanted to you know, the the type of people who go there to hear opinions they can they can find opinions via articles and other pages so like yeah the top list the best of unders like, I just don't want to keep recycling things out in those echo chambers. And I hear so, what you're saying. Then, then I, I feel like a, it gets yeah. hyper specific in these real weird, weird things that people don't necessarily need to watch. Um, Jordan, uh, have you tried Blue Run Cast Strength Rye? I have not. I've only tried the 90 something proofish um, rye. So, which had a, a pretty enjoyable flavor for the rye, but hard price point to swallow. I can only imagine that that's slightly, uh, uh slightly um, uh, 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 dialed up a little bit when it comes to the cash rank. I think it's another fifty dollars. Real quick, I'm gonna read this comment from Terrence and talk about it for a minute. Does it help if people go back and like videos? Uh, it matters less after the fact, but it still matters. Like videos can rebound for sure. Um, where it's like if they gain some traction, then YouTube will start to serve them up again in suggestions. So uh, anytime you're watching a video and you like literally like it, like you should like it because you're supporting the creator who's doing the thing. So. 
definitely recommend that. Also, regarding like serving up the content, gosh, it takes so much dang time to make this stuff. And we do it because we literally just love the whiskey and love like sharing it with you all. But it's nice when it matters and when like it gets the airtime. And that's why I, that's why I share it. I'm like, listen, like I don't know 10 people in the bourbon or Facebook group, but there's a chance some of them will actually like this crap. So I'm going to share it with them. And if they don't like it, no problem. Like if Wade Woodard wants to get on and absolutely crap on my stuff, that's fine, which he's done. Like that just proves that he's kind of a douchebag who wants to like douche on people's stuff. <laughs> um, like if you don't like it, just don't watch it. Like if you feel like you need to comment on it and crap on it, that just proves you're a douchebag. So that's my take. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it takes some stones to be like, hey, here's a thing I made and I'm proud of it. And I think the world might like it. And if they do, great. Yeah, I think if it's, they don't. I think I've that's just fine. trained myself. not a problem. I think I've trained myself not to do that because of Instagram stuff. Because of Instagram and then because of years of people being like, hey, have you, do you know Brian? He's like, he's Instagram famous. He's got, and it's like, to me, it's like, uh, to be, to like tout that kind of stuff is just, I just would rather not. I'd rather just sure. sit in self misery. So. <laughs> Whereas I think, so it, it all has to be taken in perspective, like to be Instagram famous means you did something special that people valued. Like it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you as Brian Bikey, like it doesn't actually pertain too much to what you do on a daily basis, but it does mean that you did something in an environment that people valued. And it, for instance, we live in different communities, right? We have our work communities, we have our more familial community, we have like for me, my church community, like we have these different circles that we work in. And I might mean something in a particular community. I don't mean anything in another community. Maybe I'm like in the golf community and nobody cares, like which is true. Like I have zero influence in any golf community <coughs> whatsoever, but I love golf. But in maybe a church community. But have you told I them about Swing or, Nation? <laughs> not yet um but maybe in a whiskey community i do and so like those things are not value are not in they're not non-valuable they're not worthless just because they're worthless in a certain community like the instagram community as much as like i'm cautious of it uh all of the social dilemma great documentary um it also does mean something in our society like our society does value the engagement and the identities that it cultivates over social media. Are those always healthy? Definitely not. Are they worthless? No, they're not because they actually play a pretty big role in our daily lives. Now, like a decent amount of our social interactions happen over social networking. So if we can actually contribute in that space in a positive way and in an affirming way, um, in a sharing way, then I think we're actually doing good work. And if you can succeed in that environment and be a contributor versus a taker, I think we should celebrate that. I don't think we should right. be like, oh, I, mean, it's, I think it's stupid. No, I, I think it's great. And you do have a knack for being <laughs> social media famous, <laughs> which I think is fantastic. I really think it's good. Because you were always just a contributor, particularly in the coffee scene where you were legitimately Instagram famous. You were only a contributor and a very positive one. So I'm done now. That's my second second or third horse of the night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Kyle said he just shot 99 playing golf. I need to play golf. Anybody who wants to play golf, let me know. I'm willing to travel. We'll travel for golf. Uh, the season's basically over in Wisconsin, and that sucks. Going back to this alleged Craig Barrel pick, Eric says he's not loving it. Been sipping it all stream, and I'm over it. I can go back to it now, but I'm doing this comparison of these E.H. Taylor small batch batches. <laughs> this is great this is fantastic from eric <laughs> dang eric you are famous man you just that's that's really what you have to do i mean 
It's like Eric actually knows. Like he's my friend. I'm like, surprised Eric that Drew doesn't friend. have shirts already made for whenever he goes on barrel picks that says I'm with Drew P. And like has an arrow <laughs> pointing over. And he just has everyone wear them that goes Come on the pick on. with him. That would be rude. Yeah, but it definitely seems like something that you're like not Ooh. opposed to doing. <laughs> that I mean that's brutal. That's like a kick in the nuggets. No, like no way. So that's kind of funny I'm, though. I think that'd so, be a really funny yeah. pick. <laughs> Well, now it's going to be a bit and if it's a bit it's fine but like i'm whereas i'm totally not against self-promotion i'm also i also don't want to be i don't want to be that guy like i don't want to be entitled absolutely absolutely not <coughs> excuse me like because like when i started doing this which was not that long ago it was a year ago it was just like let's just do it you know, let's make some stuff and see if people like it. And that's right. all it is, really. So it's like, it's fun when people are like, I watch your stuff. Like, that feels good. It feels, like, awesome. But I just want to be like, sweet. Like, and I'm, I want to kind of, like, give back. And this has not always been my MO. So it's been a lot of learning. <laughs> is like, like, what do you want to see? Like, what can I do for you? Because, um yeah, it's ultimately like trying to create content that people enjoy. Like, I hear you saying, like, I want to make stuff that's unique that I'm proud of. That's great. Um, and like, what I'm proud of is what people enjoy, you know, within reason. Because certainly people enjoy other whiskey channels that I'm like, that's not me. I can't do that and feel like authentic in doing it. But I can do things that I do feel authentic in doing that also people enjoy and that's what i want to lean into like the, when those two things coalesce what people enjoy and what's authentic to me that's kind of like the money zone and so that's where i want to drive because there are things i've tried that are very authentic to me people do not care about and i will still do those things periodically because it's what i like what my heart beats for um and i just know it's not going to get great engagement um and you can see that in my videos. There are things that I'm like, this is kind of fun. I like it and I'm going to do it. And I know it's going to get good engagement. And lo and behold, it does. And there are things I'm like, I really want to do this. And I'm going to do it. <coughs> and nobody watches it. That's also fine. Like the dancing goat video. I loved that. And I thought Nick's uh, story, um, the dancing goat mission really was just like something I wanted to kind of tell the story of. And so I... I spent way more time on that video than I do with any talking head video. And it, I don't know if it has a thousand views, like in terms of, like if, if a video of mine doesn't get a thousand views, it's, it's on the lower tier of performance, but I spent probably three to four more time, <coughs> excuse me, three to four more time on that video times, times time, times more time, <laughs> three to four more time gosh three to four times more time on that video than i did on other videos and got three to four times less engagement um which is fine you know that's ultimately like what we have to try and decide we're doing if it's a business then it's going to lead us to one direction probably if it's a hobby that we're just trying to like propagate then it's going to lead us in another direction that's it. I'm done. That's like your fifth horse. I, I mean, I've had a few at this point. <laughs> so when we spent Eric's point here, when we spent time with Nick, gosh, that guy is just a wealth of information. Um, Tom mentioned earlier that he might be on the, the dank. He might be. I'm not going to like negate that possibility. But that guy is so interesting. And everything out of his mouth is like, mm -hmm. dude, tell me more. So, I mean, we got a picture of it in our 45-minute stream with him a month ago or so. But we got to have him back on. Because that guy knows people and he knows things about whiskey. And he's a really interesting Instagram follow. That guy, he's kind of crazy. <laughs> but really interesting. Got some stills in. Yes, he did. Yeah, he got his new Vendome copper still. It's freaking legendary. I got nothing else. I think I spent nothing it here. all. You got anything else? Any questions, y'all, before we sign off?
I'm with Eric Sawyer. Yeah. Or just say I'm with Nathan. I feel like that would be most appropriate. We had a couple of really good shirt ideas in this episode. We had we did the I'm with Drew P. We had the the entry proof in the Sunsips logo. Yeah. Um, and there was one or two other ones. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the whole stream to find them. Do either of you can go go back and re-review a whiskey? Haven't seen any, but wondering if I missed any. Always thought that would be educational. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have not done it like in a Monday release droopy whiskey video, but on the lives I have a little bit. Like I tasted this whiskey and over time, here's how I felt about it. Specifically, I did that with uh Dickel. Actually, the last live stream we did, the Dickel 15. It's like I was really liking that. And then over time, I'm like, nah. Um, and and I mean, even in our narratives on Instagram and in these live streams, like we've talked about whiskeys that we tasted initially and then went back to, you know, after a little bit of airtime. I'm like, yeah, whatever happened that first day, I wasn't really vibing on it, but now I am. So, oh, yeah, the brother or whiskey brothers, whiskey brothers. <laughs> have you heard of have you heard of whiskey brothers podcast? Um yeah, I, I don't really do um, re-reviews. Um, there was one time where I did a blind, and then I did a second blind for Patreon. Um, and it was a little bit different of a, of a reveal. Um, did that once. And then a lot of times when it comes to some of my reviews, I f unless it's one of my like fresh open reviews, like immediately popping, um, there's some there are things that I've tried a couple of times. And and have formed a more wholesome uh, impression of it, so that I don't need to, you know, wonder has this changed at all or whatever. And sometimes in those, I'll try and you know do a quick summary to say, you know, this is definitely one you might want to add a couple drops to. This is definitely one you might want to open up a little bit. This is one you might want to leave in your glass for ten minutes or so. Um, and and that usually just comes from you know spinning a couple of takes. What I what I personally like to do is do several tastings of it, not looking at any notes and saying whatever information I've said repeatedly is most likely a through line to the product. Um, and so that, that allows me to see, you know, if it's, if it's doing anything as it changes over time. Hmm. These EH Taylor small batches are very comfortable. All right. Um, old elk? No, not really. I mean, yeah, it's I have fine. three. I have three old elks, and they are uh, they're okay. They're fine. They're okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hustle after them. But if a group you know that you appreciate and you respect does a pick, maybe get one then. Um, we'll sign off real quick next week. Um, I'll be doing the what's the best makers release ever. Speaking of clickbait, um, but out of specifically FAE01, FAE02, Makers 46 cask, and SE4 PR5, what is the top makers release, in my opinion, out of those four? I've already done the research. I will retaste live ish while I record, then I will publish uh, for Monday's video. Then I'll be doing videos in Texas with whatever I find. I'll probably do a video rating my dad's closet. What does my dad have? <laughs> That'll be fun. Uh, and then I'll do a video likely with my brother because um, I'm going to go visit him in Amarillo. So um, I have no idea when that content will come out. Uh, but hopefully every Monday, you know, I'm technically on vacation-ish. But I'll be down there for three weeks. I am working like half time while I'm down there. So vacation-ish. But at least Monday, you'll have makers. Brian, what do you have coming up? Um, I have not had a date scheduled for this because I've been it's been on the on the the list for a while. But I have a of a buddy with a store and he had uh, Mictors 20. And he said, if I wanted to, I could come do a live recording drinking this year's Mictors 20 with him at his store, um, which would be a little bit different. It'd be a little bit different for me because I would be not in this location. I'd be at a different location, probably do a little vignette of like, hey, here's the store and here's the, the guy I'm with. Yeah. And then and then taste M20 with him. Is that um, what you would do that with Tim? 
No, it's not with Tim. They don't have the mixers. Oh. Um, but I would, um, I would do that at a place called Waterfront Whiskey and Wine. Um, that's just up in the air. We've we've kind of been bouncing around dates for a while. Um, I may or may not do this uh, Koi Hill. You know, all the there's already a bunch of videos out there about Koi Hill. Um, so yeah. don't necessarily need to bring it out. But uh, I thought about it uh, just because you know you know me that I like a lot of Brown Foreman products, and you know I liked Birthday Bourbon this year, but it it pales in comparison to um, King Kentucky. The old four barrel strengths I have a lot of experience with, but don't necessarily love them. So I wouldn't mind putting it in there, maybe putting it up against a barrel strength or something like that. Uh, maybe a, a president's choice or something. Um, we'll see. Um, I've got a whole queue of some craft bottles um, in the series with keg and bottle that, mm. you know, they're just there that I can do whenever I do them. But I don't have any of those that I'm probably going to do immediately. Maybe. I've got I've got two things I might get to in the, in the more immediate future. Um, and then I was going to do a year end wrap up. Um, I nice. again, I don't know that I necessarily want to do a best bourbons of the year because I know that that is very dependent on where you are and what you have access to. Uh, it's it's a very long winded subject for me because, you know, I don't necessarily think that it's fair to people to say, well, I have to choose from only what's accessible to most markets because I don't think that's the best whiskey. And there's a lot of supposedly great allocated whiskey out there. That's kind of disappointing this year. And then there's some really hard to get whiskeys that like, I, I'm not just going to say, well, you suck. You missed out on this. So I just am going to, I think I want to do a year in review and say, what were my surprises? What were my disappointments? Um, and just, generally talk, talk about in a little bit more detail the things that I just mentioned to you, how that's difficult to do and accurately portray, you know, when everyone has different experiences of what they have access to. Hot take, Remus 5 and Makers FAEO2 would not be on those lists, even though I think they're going to be on a lot of people's end of the year list. And I'll get into 100%. that in the video. <clears throat> yeah, and then that's probably where we disagree, but... I don't know what else you'd pick above them, and especially in terms of accessible whiskeys. Like if you're using the top whiskeys of the year that were semi-accessible, name two that exceeded those. I can't. They just weren't. Like yeah, I think that's. I got but lucky to pull Russells. Right, I got but lucky here's, to pull Midwinter Nights. Um, and but this so is my like, problem. That's my problem. Is like, I feel like if you create a list, it's still pretty concrete. If you say to somebody people are looking for guidance and i feel like if you say these are the best of the most accessible then what they you're saying are. is these what i what i feel like you're saying is these get the seal of approval but it doesn't explain how vastly different it could be compared to what you would say are significantly better products and so i feel like i don't i mean in a lot of regards 80 dollars is a lot of money to people so if if an 80 dollar product would be number 2 in a list of five easily accessible products for somebody, but would be number 46 in a list for me, is it really worth me telling somebody it's worth going to get? Does that yes. make sense? It, yes, because if they can't get numbers one through 44, then it absolutely matters. And that's where I like my content, like, and it's fine, like, because it's just maybe a little bit difference in perspective, yeah. but that's where I try and create stuff as like, you know, I love this because I could freaking get it because I know yeah. I'm not going to get B-Tech. I know I'm not going to get Pappy. I know King of Kentucky doesn't get here. Parker's Heritage, I'm not going to get. Coy Hill, I'm not going to get. There are so right. many things well, some that of them... I don't get that every time I pull something that's semi-unicorn, I feel like a lucky SOB that I get it because I have a YouTube channel. Like, And that's partially true. Um, whereas... You know, a lot of the folks, even the 42 people who are watching are just like, yeah, dude, I'm freaking some joker earlier said I'm jacked that I got Remus batch five. And I was with that guy. Like, I love Remus batch five and I'm drinking the mm -hmm. crap out of it because in terms of what I could get, it was, you know, top three this year in terms right. of. Achievable. As a, so that's my perspective. A, that's it. I totally a, empathize with what you're saying because you're like, but there's amazing stuff out there. There's like way better stuff out there. It's just so hard to get. 
So yeah, and the thing that's I think the summation to my video as a as a spoiler, but again, there's only a couple people watching this. You know, some I think a majority of my favorite bottles that have come out this year have been picks of easily accessible products. Now, the individual bottles, right? Because they're picks are not easily accessible. But what what the call to action for that is is don't turn down picks like this you know be on the lookout for that or you know don't don't think that just a store pick of a of a common product on a shelf might you know don't think that that couldn't be your favorite product of the year i think people would be, be surprised banger, when they hear yeah. what i would probably say is my is my all-around top bottle of the year sweet well that was a good that was a good conversation to end with it was great yeah Deep content tonight. That was a killer stream. All right, squad. Thanks for joining. Appreciate you all for sure. Like 45 people still with us. I want you guys to know we don't take that for granted that you spend hours with us. It's a lot of fun. We appreciate it. Appreciate Absolutely. you for watching for sure. Um, and then, yeah, if you want similar content, just follow our streams and you'll get more of us being us. Y'all have a good night. You know what the deal is. Stay healthy, stay safe, and keep it neat. Cheers, everybody.